Hey, and we are live. What's up, guys? Welcome to Fed It. Today, we're going to break down the Ghislaine Maxwell case, uh, a.k.a. part two of the Epstein duology video. Okay, let's get into it, guys. Move over, Denzel. Okay, guys, I used to be a special agent on Lynch Investigations. It is, this is the arrest paperwork, okay? So here is the booking uh cases that i did mostly were human smuggling and drug trafficking those are like two crimes that i'm very good agent very strong agent i did a lot of big cases i've done title three intercepts which is basically listening to phones i've written hundreds of affidavits to arrest people i've done uh i've been a grand jury and testified a million times i've done big cases uh i've done all right what's up guys welcome to fed it man uh, sorry for the delay, guys. I actually just got off a Zoom call with uh, some of the loyal patrons, man. We had a great discussion over there. We we're talking about real estate, making money, getting girls, cold approaching, all the things that we typically talk about here on this side of the internet over at Fresh and Fit, helping you guys navigate finances, fitness, and females. Um, but yeah, we ain't here to talk about no chicks. We're here to talk, well, we are here to talk about one woman. We're here to talk about uh, Ghislaine Maxwell or Ghislaine Maxwell, whatever you want to say. I think it's pronounced Ghislaine. Uh, we're going to talk about her, guys. Um, if you guys don't remember, um, yet last week I broke down the Epstein case, which I'm going to share the screen with y'all real quick and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about here. Um, and this case, guys, uh, ooh, it's it was crazy. Um, and here, let me share the screen with y'all real fast. Boom. Um, I thank you guys for bearing with me here because definitely um, – that Zoom call went a little bit longer than expected, but I, I can't I can't leave a question not answered. But yeah, this was the this was uh this was oh, it, guys. Shit. Basically, uh, we broke this down, and you know, as you guys can see, look, the timestamps, man, are super detailed, guys. Uh, I went over, you know, who he is, famous people he's associated with. Um, I correctly predicted Ghislaine would lose in the federal trial, but we got something else to talk about with that trial as well, which we're going to talk about today. Um, birthplace breakdown. I actually found the FBI report, guys. The 302, the FBI 302, that's what they're called, uh, that was used to open up the Epstein case. Okay. Um, I explained how the FBI works, everything, man. We got, man, it was, I put even more stamps in here. Each victim um, interview, um, I went through the affidavit of what they used to go after him for the state. And then we read through the, um, then we read through the federal indictment. Um, yeah, guys, there's, Everything is here. This ended up being almost a four-hour breakdown, but no one on the internet has a more thorough background on this investigation and breakdown than this video right here. And I can say that with ultimate certainty. We went through all the documents. Yes, I know it was redundant a bit going through every single uh, victim's testimony uh, as far as, you know, Epstein, the terrible things he did to them. But I think it was very important for you guys to illustrate that there was a pattern. Um, he was doing this for a long time. And uh, he has a, he had a system, guys, which we're going to talk about here with Ghislaine as well. Um, and that's kind of what happened, um, you know, in the early 2000s, what he was doing. So, okay, let's see here. Um, and all, for all you members out there, by the way, I updated the badges. So you guys are going to see some new badges coming in here soon. Uh, or you're going to see them right now if you're a member. Uh, when you join in so uh to everyone that's a member thank you so much and all the supporters thank you and also guys as you guys come in make sure to like the video okay do me a favor and like the goddamn video so anyway um all right so let's get right into it man um so we're gonna t today we're gonna talk about our girl Ghislaine maxwell so let's get the quick little background on her let's pull up the wikipedia page that everyone likes to criticize me for using which wikipedia guys this isn't a college essay all right wikipedia is actually very accurate all right because it's monitored. But anyway, uh, we got Glenn Noel Marion Maxwell. That's her full name. Born December 25th, 1961. Born in, in Christmas Day. Is a British British former socialite and convicted sex offender. She was found guilty in 2021 of a child sex trafficking and other offenses in connection with the financier and convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein, who we know uh, passed away, guys. Uh, and did he kill himself? Well, <laughs> we talked about that a little bit on the last podcast. You guys go to check it out. Um Born in France, Maxwell was raised in Oxford. In the 1980s, she attended Beloyal College, Oxford, then became a prominent member of London's social scene. She worked for her father, Robert Maxwell, until his death in 1991 and when she moved to New York City, where she continued living as a socialite and had a relationship with Epstein. Um, and here, too, guys, I want to say, um, here, let me pull up her, her situation with Epstein. 
because the, it, it's very ambiguous what their relationship was. Um, you know, pe some people were like, hey, are they in a, uh, you know, in a romantic relationship? Hey, is she just an assistant? Whatever. I think, you know, obviously they, they were smashing. Right. But, you know, she was one of the main figureheads that was getting him the girls. OK. Um, and she was his she was his right hand, man. And honestly, guys, the, the U.S. government, they wanted to go after her because they couldn't get Epstein. Epstein, um, you know, obviously was found deceased in a jail in the, in, a, in the federal prison uh, waiting um, after uh, waiting trial. And, um, you know, that's where the, all the things, hey, Epstein didn't kill himself, which, you know, I'll leave that up to the uh, to the conspiracy people out there. But the point is, is that the U.S. government put on a full court press going after her um, once they couldn't get him. Uh, so let me see here. I'm trying to find whatever. OK, um, let's see here. Uh, so following sex trafficking allegations being brought by prosecutors against Epstein in July 2019, the organization announced uh, cessation of operations the same month. Maxwell, a naturalized U.S. citizen, retains both French and British citizenship. On July 2nd, 2020, Maxwell was arrested and charged by the federal government of the United States with the crimes of enticement of minors and sex trafficking of underage girls, which we're going to read through that indictment, guys. Don't worry. And then uh, she was denied bail as a flight risk with the judge expressing concerns regarding her completely opaque finances, uh, her skill at live, uh, living in hiding, and the fact that France does not extradite its citizens. On uh, December 29, 2021, she was convicted on five out of six counts, including one of sex trafficking of a minor. She faced a second criminal trial for two charges of lying under oath about Epstein's abuse of underage girls, which we're going to break that down as well, guys. So uh, so now we know who the woman is, okay? Uh, obviously, she's much older. Um, you know, she's 61 at this point. And, uh, you know, if these charges end up going through, guys, she's going to probably die in prison. Um, so let's see here. Let's. Uh, I'm going to share the screen with y'all. Oh, okay, let me hit some of these chats real fast. And thank you guys so much for the donations. I appreciate it greatly. Like I said, I apologize for coming late. Um, like I said, when I do those Zoom calls, man, I go all in. I want to make sure I get everyone's questions answered. So um, I appreciate you guys being patient. Uh, let's see here. We got 50 bucks from uh, Tommy Hamilton. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Myron, sign up for the 200 Patreon because I thought Zoom call meant one-on-one. -on -one. My mistake. Is there any avenue to chat one-on-one, -on -one, reinvestments, et cetera? Uh, yeah, man. Um, hit me up on Instagram right now, Unplug Fit. And uh, we can book a consultation. I'm not going to lie. I'm not cheap. Um, Patreon is probably the best way to do Zoom calls with me at an affordable price. But if you want to do a one-on-one, -on -one, that's cool. I completely understand that some people want some privacy. and They don't want everyone knowing uh, their situation. Uh, and then we got Karan Quar. Thank you so much. $10 Canadian. I appreciate that. Super sticker so much. Shout out to you and your fiance. Um, and then Dollface says, I don't think they were smashing. I don't know, man. I think they are smashing. And shout out to Dollface, guys. As you guys know, she comes on the show. Great participant. Helps out. I'm going to mod you up, actually. Are you are you got a wrench? Let me let me mod you up real fast so you can help me out with managing this chat. Um, I think. Oh, no, she got a wrench. All right, cool. All right. So um, so let's go ahead, guys, and get right into it and read the um the U.S. Department. As you guys know, we read the official documents over here, man. I ain't going to sit here and like, oh, well, I think this and that. We read the official documents over here. I fed it and I break it down for you guys and I decipher what the fuck is going on for y'all, okay? Because there's a lot of legal jargon in there. Uh, are you going to talk about Epstein Island? Mm, it might come up in the uh, with with this, but uh, honestly, guys, the, the island, I mean, eh, you know, yeah, we get it. He was bringing people over there and, you know, he was sexually abusing minors over there. You know, it, the guy had money, man. He was a billionaire, you know? And not only was he a billionaire, he had this money back in the early 2000s before this crazy inflation. So, um, all right. So, uh, so thank you so much for that. Um, and shout out to all the people in the chat. All right. So um, let's go ahead and um, pull up the, the U.S. Department of Justice press release. Now, guys, just a teaching point. Anytime you have uh, a federal case, go ahead and read the federal press release from the U.S. Department of Justice every single time, okay? Because, um, you know, other websites might give you some bullshit or m most of the time, nine out of 10 times, they copy and paste this anyway. So go ahead and get it from the official source. It's always justice.gov. That's how you know it's the official government site. Um, let me enlarge this for you guys. Make sure that it comes out 
nice and uh, nice and large. Let me know, guys, on your end if that's uh, it should be big, right? Is that big on your end? No, not yet. Okay, let me. You know what I'm gonna do? I know what I'm gonna do. Stop sharing. So what I'm gonna do, guys? So I'm gonna move Streamyard. I'm gonna share this, and then that is gonna make life a lot easier for y'all. I know that's a point of exception. Is that bigger now? That should be bigger, right? For y'all? Yeah? Okay. Um, and then let me try. Okay. So, uh, okay. So we go here. Ghislaine Maxwell charged in Manhattan Federal Court. And this is July 2nd, by the way, guys, 2020. Uh, charged in Manhattan Federal Court for um, conspiring with Jeffrey Epstein to sexually abuse minors. So this is right after she got arrested, okay? Maxwell is alleged to have facilitated, participated in acts of abuse, additionally charged with perjury in connection with 2016 depositions. Okay, what is perjury, guys? Perjury is basically lying under oath, okay? And what is the deposition? A deposition was when they bring you in, swear you uh, swear, swear you in under oath, and they take a, a statement from you, okay? And it's recorded. It's pre-recorded. You're typically there. They swear you in. You're there with your lawyer, hopefully. Um, and they, um, which I'm surprised she even gave us. Okay, we're going to read that in the indictment. I don't know why the hell she even talked, but uh, we'll talk about that later on. So, okay. And remember, I taught you guys how to read these things, right? So remember, number one is almost always the United States attorney that talks first, right? Then the lead agency that was that ran the case comes second, okay? So in this case, you see here William F. Sweeney Jr., the assistant director in charge of the New York field office of the what? Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI. So now I know that the FBI ran this case. They were the lead agency, okay? There's no such thing. I don't give a fuck what anybody tells you guys. Let me tell y'all right now from a federal agent perspective, there's no such thing as a joint investigation. There's always one lead agency, okay? There's one primary case agent. Yes, he does have other agents that he works with that they, you know, they might say it's a joint investigation, but at the end of the day, there's one affiant, there's one primary case agent. When you got to sit next to that AUSA for trial, the main case agent sits next to them. So there's always a lead agency, all right? When you do an organized crime drug enforcement task force case, an OCDF case, as they would say, there is a lead agency in that. They'll try to say it's joint, but it's not. All right. So the FBI was lead agency here. So um, Audrey Swa Strauss, the acting United States attorney for the Southern District of New York. Oh, who look, look who it is again, guys. Southern District of New York. I told y'all they are extremely aggressive. They get everybody. All right. William S. Sweeney Jr., the assistant director in charge of the New York field office of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. And Dermot Shea, commissioner of the New York City Police Department, NYPD, announced that Ghislaine, Mac Ghislaine Maxwell was arrested this morning and charged with enticing a minor to travel to engage in criminal sexual activity, transporting a minor with the intent to engage in criminal sexual activity, conspiracy to commit both of those offenses, and perjury in connection with a sworn deposition. Okay. The indictment on seal today alleges that between at least in or about 1994 through 1997, Maxwell, a co-conspirator, Jeffrey Epstein, exploited girls as young as 14, including by enticing them to travel and transporting them for the purpose of engaging in illegal sex acts. And that right there, guys, is what made the case federal. Anytime you travel and affect interstate commerce, feds are coming in, baby. You know what I'm saying? As alleged, knowing that Epstein had a preference for young girls, Maxwell played a critical role in the grooming and abuse of minor victims that took place in locations including New York, Florida, and New Mexico. In addition, as alleged, Maxwell made several false statements and sworn depositions in 2016. Maxwell is expected to be presented this afternoon in a federal court in New Hampshire. This case is assigned to U.S. District Judge Allison J. Nathan. Now, you guys are probably wondering, what the fuck is she doing in, in New Hampshire? That's where the feds caught her, guys. Uh, she was hiding out in, in, a, in a huge estate out there. As you guys know, she she has some money. She probably still has some money left over from uh, you know her situation with Epstein. I think Epstein paid her something like $30 million uh, during the course of their relationship. And that was what the feds were able to find. you know. And keep in mind that she came from money already from, uh, from her family, uh, had high-powered friends, etc., so um, it's include Prince Andrew and, you know, people like Epstein and Trump and et cetera. She was, you know, she was willing and dealing with with uh, Epstein. And she was actually a huge uh, connection for Epstein to have these powerful relationships. OK, um, so <clears throat> so that's how they were able to find her in uh, New Hampshire. Uh, and then anytime you get caught in another state and I'll say this real quick, um, anytime you get caught in another state, guys, 
pretty much you're going to, since it's federal, there's no extradition or none of this bullshit. It's federal. So they're going to just move you to the district that you were indicted out of. You go and you see the judge in the district that you're in, and then they're going to move you to the district you got indicted in. So I'll, I'll give you guys, uh, you know what? I won't tell story time yet. I want to get through this. Um, and I got, uh, Christina helped me out. Can you bring me the other thingy, the other one of these from the desk? Okay. So, um, all right. So acting U.S. Attorney, US Attorney Audrey Strauss said, as alleged, uh, Ghislaine Maxwell facilitated, aided, and participated in acts of sexual abuse of minors. Maxwell enticed minor girls, got them to trust her, and then delivered them into the trap that she and Jeffrey Epstein had set. She pretended to be a woman they could trust all the while she was setting them up to be abused sexually by Epstein and, in some cases, Maxwell herself. Today, after many years, Ghislaine Maxwell finally stands charged for her role in these crimes. And this always happens, guys. You know, the U.S. attorney and them, they always want to give a uh, give a statement um, after, you know, a big arrest like this. And then, you know, obviously the director is going to say something. FBI Assistant Director William F. Sweeney Jr. said, Preserving uh, the innocence of children is among the most important responsibilities we carry as adults. Like Epstein, Miss Maxwell chose to blatantly disregard the law and her responsibility as an adult using whatever means she had at her disposal to lure vulnerable youth into behavior they should never have been exposed to creating the potential <clears throat> uh oops sorry here uh i got lost my train of thought here um where the fuck creating the potential for lasting harm we know the quest for justice has been met with great disappointment for the victims and that reliving these events is traumatic. Uh, the example set by the women involved has been a powerful one. They preserved against the rich and connected, and they did so without a badge, a gun, or a subpoena, and they stood together. I have no doubt the bravery exhibited by the women involved here has empowered uh, others to speak up about the crimes of which they've been subjected. NYPD Commissioner Dermot Shea said, the heinous crimes uh, these charges allege are and always be abhorrent for the lasting trauma they inflict on victims. I commend our investigators and law enforcement partners for their continued commitment to bringing justice to the survivors of sexual assault everywhere. And then look at this, bro. The FBI actually put this in here. So if anyone else, you know, uh, was involved, they want you to call the FBI. OK, um, so they're still. They're willing to add in other counts to the indictment. They're willing to do a superseding indictment. And here is the indictment here, which we're going to go ahead and pull up. Um, so hold on. Let me. And then, you know, we'll read some of these super chats as well. Um, Christina, do me a solid. Read some of these chats. Uh, huh? Uh, yeah, read those two. Those two? Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Rallo said Casey Anthony case. Um, I know it's state. Uh, should we do that one? What was the that Casey Anthony case? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can look it up. Yeah. Yeah, I can like find out about it. Um, SGJ said mod gang, mod me gang. I'm here every Sunday, like church. Oh, that's funny. Um, let's see what else. Sorry, guys. I hate being on camera. I'm getting a soundboard set up. Yeah, and I don't like being on camera. So. Oh, okay. Well, just uh, read the thing, man. Okay, yeah, well. I'm look. I'm looking for it. Um. Okay. Well, I was said again. Catching it on replay, brother. Keep grinding. Mashallah. Did I say that right? What was that? Mashallah. I don't know if I said that right. Maybe. You probably fucked it up. Maybe. Okay. I don't. I don't really know it. Um. Oh. One, two, three. Shout out, pathetic. Much love and support. Break it down, my makes my work hours fly by. Seventy hour work. Oh, today. you gotta actually highlight it though. Oh. You gotta click it. Oh. Don't worry, guys. I got you. Stupid. Okay. So. Uh, <laughs> you didn't all right. Show me how to do it. Okay. Let me. Uh, let's see here. Um. Okay. So we got a uh, Zokai new member. Thank you. Welcome to the team, my friend. Uh. And then we got uh one to three. Shout out to Fedit. Much love and support. Break it down, Myron. Makes my work hours fly by. 70 hours a week, baby. Hey, got you, man. You got to make that money, my friend. And then Raul. Catch you on the replay, brother. Keep grinding. Mashallah. Thank you so much. Shukran Uh, And then, yeah, all you got to do is just click the just click the, 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 the thing. Oh, there. I got to find it. Yeah. yeah. Any, any, anything that comes colored up, you just highlight it. Oh, uh, Mod me, gangy. Okay. And then we, okay, I think we're caught up now. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So let's, uh, let's continue on. So now I'm going to pull up the indictment for you guys. Um. 
Actually, you know what? I'll just do it right here from the from the screen. <clears throat> I had it saved, but you know what? Might as well just do it right on the screen. We do a lot, baby. All right. So here's the indictment right here, guys, right? And a lot of the times when you look at these press releases, they'll have the sometimes they'll have the indictment or they'll have the criminal complaint right there. Bang, open it up, and here we are. Okay. Here is the indictment against Ghislaine. I'm gonna enlarge it for you guys. Uh Cool. All right. So United States District Court, Southern District of New York, United States of America versus Ghislaine Maxwell, defendant. And then this is the case number here, guys. 20, right? This is the fiscal year. Okay. CR means it's criminal. If it's MJ, it means it's it's not criminal yet. Um, and then 330, which is the actual case number, right? Count one, conspiracy to entice minors to travel to engage in illegal sex acts. Okay. And if you guys remember. We had talked about um, how Epstein... So, quick little recap on this real fast, right? From the other show, right? <laughs> so, this is Epstein's scheme. Basically, he um, gathered... And we, when we talked about this, guys, we talked about this back in, like, 2005, like, okay? This is kind of before Ghislaine gets into the picture too much as far as, like, with the Florida residences. Um, because, remember, she was living in, in England at the time. So, what he would do is he would recruit girls from the high school nearby in West Palm Beach, and he would get them to get other girls to come to the place and give them a massage. And then he would try to use that, you know, to feel up on them and, 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 you know, do sex acts, whatever it was, it was really disturbing. And if you guys watched the other episode uh, that I did on Epstein, uh, you know, we go through the entire affidavit where, you know, outlines it and it was extremely uh, disturbing guys, but um, it kind of gave you insight as to what kind of, uh, of a sick individual um, Epstein was. Um, but Ghislaine, Ghislaine basically, was helping him procure these women, okay? And 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 uh, Epstein had a bunch of people. He had like a network of recruiters that would do it for him. He had high school girls doing it. He had Ghislaine. He had other women doing it. Um, yeah, he was doing all. He was had all kinds of women helping him out with this, okay? And then he would pay the girls for doing these massages. You know, somewhere between two to five hundred dollars every single time they came. And a bunch of the girls would come in repeat times, bring other friends. They'd get paid for referrals. So he had like a whole little thing going on you know like he had a whole uh, ring going okay and the thing is guys is that with, with the feds come in anytime they're under 18 now if these women were 18 years old or older there would be no case this would be solicitation prostitution it is what it is but since they were minors bang automatically becomes federal and since they were using phones and they were bringing girls from out of state flying all over the place he was going between new york to florida to new mexico this affects interstate commerce, which what makes it a federal case, guys. So, all right. Overview. The grand jury charges. The charges set forth herein stem from the role of Ghislaine Maxwell, the defendant, in the sexual exploitation um, and abuse of multiple minor girls by Jeffrey Epstein. In particular, from at least in or about 1994 up to and including at least in or about 1997, Maxwell assisted, facilitated, and contributed to Jeffrey Epstein's abuse of minors, girls, by, among other things, helping Epstein to recruit, groom, and ultimately abuse victims known to Maxwell and Epstein to be under the age of 18. The victims were as young as 14 years old when they were groomed and abused by Maxwell and Epstein, both of whom knew that certain victims were, in fact, under the age of 18. And um, matter of fact, guys, let me open up this right here because um, what I'm thinking is that <clears throat> I'm going to get you guys, because I'm trying to highlight this thing. And, you know, let me just fucking download it right here. Oh, okay. Boom. Uh, press, like, edit or something. What was that? You think it's press, like, edit, like we did last time? Mm, no, nah, I don't I don't think so. Uh, here we go. So here's the indictment. I got uh, saved here. Yeah, so, okay. And then, damn it, how do you highlight it? Is it... Hmm. Okay, fuck it. We'll just continue. We're just, we do a lot. We keep going. I'm I'm uh, technology challenged, I guess, with this thing. Okay. Um, <clears throat> when they were groomed and abused by Maxwell and Epstein, both of whom knew that certain victims were, in fact, under the age of 18. So that's the key right there, guys, okay? Paragraph two. As part of and in furtherance of their scheme to abuse minor victims, Ghislaine Maxwell, the defendant, and Jeffrey Epstein enticed and caused minor victims to travel to Epstein's re residences in different states, which Maxwell knew and intended would result in their grooming for and subject, sub, subjection to sexual abuse. 
Remember, I told you guys it starts with like, um, you know, with massages, right? Moreover, in an effort to conceal her crimes, Maxwell repeatedly lied when questioned about her conduct, including in relation to some of the minor victims described herein when providing testimony under oath in 2016. Factual background. All right. So now we're going to get into the facts of the case. All right, guys. During the time periods charged in this indictment, Ghislaine Maxwell, the defendant, had a personal and professional relationship with Jeffrey Epstein and was among his closest associates. In particular, between in or about 1994 and in or about 1997, Maxwell was in an intimate relationship with Epstein and also was paid by Epstein to manage his various properties. Over the course of their relationship, Maxwell and Epstein were photographed together on multiple occasions, including the image below. And this right here, guys, is like the main photo the U.S. government uses all the time as exhibits to show uh, their relationship. And I think this photo was taken uh, in the early 2000s, if I'm not mistaken. Beginning in at least 1994, Ghislaine Maxwell, the defendant, and Tyson groomed multiple minor girls to engage in sex acts with Jeffrey Epstein through a variety of means and methods, including but not limited to the following. Maxwell first attempted to befriend some of the Epstein's minor victims prior to their abuse, including by asking the victims about their lives, their schools, and their families. Maxwell and Epstein would spend time building friendships with minor victims by, for example, taking minor victims to the movies or shoppings. shopping. Some of these outings would involve Maxwell and Epstein spending time together with a minor victim, while some would involve Maxwell and Epstein spending time alone with the minor victim. Having developed a rapport with the victim, Maxwell would try to normalize sexual abuse for a minor victim by, among other things, discussing sexual topics, undressing in front of the victim, being present when a minor victim was undressed, and or being present for sex acts involving the minor victim and Epstein. Yes, guys, it's going to get pretty tough here, okay? Um, these are some pretty heinous crimes, but uh, we'll get through this. <coughs> the, the Epstein episode was even tougher. Like, at least we're her. She was just recruiting. She wasn't really involved in it as much as this guy. Obviously, as you know, this was all for Epstein. But uh, but yeah, she was involved to, in some degrees. You know, dildos were involved in sex toys. And yeah, it's just terrible. Uh, Maxwell's presence during minor victims' interactions with Epstein, including interactions where the minor victims were undressed, was undressed, or that involved sex acts with Epstein, helped put the victims at ease because an adult woman was present. We talk about pre-selection, right, guys? Terrible, but you, you guys can see it in its most primal form here. Epstein wasn't stupid. He always used female recruiters, guys, um, when he was doing this scheme, okay? He never used guys. He always used Ghislaine, other young women, um, and girls uh, <clears throat> that were also in the same high school, social circle, etc. all right? This is an example of using female psychology uh, in a nefarious way, okay? For example, in some instances, Maxwell would uh, message Epstein in front of a minor victim. In other instances, Maxwell encouraged minor victims to provide massages to Epstein, including sexualized massages during which a minor victim would be fully or partially nude. Many of these massages resulted in Epstein sexually abusing the minor victims, which you guys saw on the other episode how he would do this. In addition, Epstein offered to help some minor victims by paying for travel and or educational opportunities, and Maxwell encouraged certain victims to accept Epstein's assistance. As a result, victims were made to feel indebted and believe that Maxwell and Epstein were trying to help them. Okay. And let me uh, push this to the side here. Bam. Okay. <clears throat> Through this process, Maxwell and Epstein entice victims to engage in sexual activity with Epstein. In some instances, Maxwell was present for and participated in the sexual abuse of minor victims. Some such, some such incidents occurred in the context of messages which developed into sexual encounters. Ghislaine Maxwell, the defendant, facilitated Jeffrey Epstein's access to minor victims knowing that he had a sexual preference for underage girls and that he intended to engage in sexual activity with those victims. Epstein's uh, resulting abuse of minor victims included, among other things, touching a victim's breasts, touching a victim's genitals, playing, uh, placing a sex toy such as a vibrator on a victim's genitals, um, directing a victim to touch Epstein while he masturbated, and directing a victim to touch Epstein's genitals. And, <clears throat> and this guy's uh, obviously more detailed in um, the criminal complaint that I had read on the other case, which, you know, it's tough to go through, but, you know, it shows you how he systematically uses other women, uh, typically young girls in that in that situation. He didn't really use G Ghislaine in that in that case because uh, Ghislaine was in New York while he was doing this stuff in, in Florida. And she was helping him. Uh, she was helping procure women. Um, but in general, <clears throat> uh, you know, he had different women, women helping him. Uh, 
So Maxwell and Epstein's victims between approximately and or about 1994. Also, uh, Christina, can you figure out how to uh, we can highlight this thing here? Because I want to like highlight stuff here for it's them. On yours, um, hmm? It's on yours, though. OK, we'll just figure it out. Uh, OK, so and if someone in the chat knows, maybe Christina can pull it up and, and find out. Um, I don't know. I had it before. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 okay. Um, between approximately in or about 1994 and in or about 1997, Ghislaine Maxwell, the defendant, facilitated Jeffrey Epstein's access to minor victims by, among other things, inducing and enticing and aiding and abetting the inducement and enticement of multiple minor victims. Victims were groomed and or abused at multiple locations, including the following. Um, okay. Okay, so now we're going to go through um, his properties, guys. Which I gotta get a sip of water here. I'm, I'm dying. Here, just um, here. No, I got it right here. No, here, it's fine. All right, so we're gonna go through his property, guys. As we talked about before, he has the New York property, he has a New Mexico property, he has the West Palm Beach property, and he has the island. Okay, which I think they, they purposely let. Let's see if this is in the indictment. They might have not had it in this indictment because it's, it's foreign soil. Well, let's see. A multi story private residence on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, New York, owned by Epstein, the New York residence, which is depicted in the following photograph. Oh, by the way, guys, this house is like 52 million bucks. Uh, we searched it on the last episode because the government is actually in the process of seizing it. All right. An estate in Palm Beach, Florida, owned by Epstein, the Palm Beach residence, which is depicted in the following photograph. And also, guys, I showed uh, this property as well uh, in West Palm Beach, which this house is also worth a fortune as well. Uh, Palm Beach. And then a ranch in Santa Fe, New Mexico, owned by Epstein, the New Mexico residence, which is depicted in the following photograph. God damn, look at this thing. Woo, all right. Out in the middle of nowhere, New Mexico. Maxwell's personal residence in London, England. Among the victims induced or enticed by Ghislaine Maxwell, the defendant, uh, were minor victims identified herein as minor victim one, minor victim two, and minor victim three. In particular, and during time periods relevant to this indictment, Maxwell engaged in the following acts, among others, with respect to minor victims. Maxwell met minor victim one when minor victim one was approximately 14 years old. Maxwell subsequently interacted with minor victim one on multiple occasions occasions at Epstein's residences, knowing that minor victim one was under the age of 18 at the time. During these interactions, which took place between approximately 1994 and 1997, Maxwell groomed minor victim one to engage in sexual acts with Epstein through multiple means. First, Maxwell and Epstein attempted to befriend minor victim one, taking her to the movies and to shopping trips. And this is what they would do, guys. They would spend money on these, on these, uh, on these victims. Maxwell also asked minor victim one about school, her classes, her family, and other aspects of her life. Maxwell then sought to normalize inappropriate and abusive conduct by, among other things, undressing in front of minor victim one and being present when minor victim one undressed in front of Epstein. Within the first year after Maxwell and Epstein met minor victim one, Epstein began sexually abusing minor victim one. Maxwell was present for and involved in some of this abuse. In particular, Maxwell involved minor victim one in group sexualized massages of Epstein. During those group sexualized massages, Maxwell and or minor victim one would engage in sex acts with Epstein. Um, Epstein and Maxwell both encouraged minor victim one to travel to Epstein's residences in both New York and Florida. As a result, minor victim was sexually abused by Epstein in both New York and Florida. Minor victim one was enticed to travel across state lines for the purpose of sexual encounters with Epstein. And Maxwell is aware that Epstein engaged in sexual activity with minor victim one after minor victim one traveled to Epstein's properties, including in the context of a sexualized massage. Maxwell interacted with minor victim two. And guys, just so you know, there were four main victims that the government built their case around, okay? And these are the four victims that testified at the trial, which we're going to talk about that here next. And then we're also going to talk about how, um, uh, for lack of a better term, one of the jurors fucked up, okay? We're, we're, we're going to break that down as well. And, and there's a chance that Maxwell might get a uh, a mistrial here. Uh, but I'm going to break that down for you guys and explain uh, the gravity of the situation. But uh, let's keep going through here so that we understand the charges, all right? So now we're going to talk about minor victim two. 
Maxwell interacted a minor victim too on at least one occasion in or about 1996 at Epstein's residence in New Mexico when minor victim two was under the age of 18. Minor victim two had flown into New Mexico from out of state at Epstein's invitation for the purpose of being groomed for and or subjected to acts of sexual abuse. Maxwell knew that minor victim two was under the age of 18 at the time. While in New Mexico, Maxwell and Epstein took minor victim two to a movie and Maxwell took minor victim two shopping. Maxwell also discussed minor victim two school, classes, and family with minor victim two. This is to build rapport with the victims, guys. In New Mexico, Maxwell began her efforts to groom minor victim two for abuse by Epstein by, among other things, providing an unsolicited massage to minor victim two, during which minor victim two was topless. Maxwell also encouraged minor victim two to massage Epstein. So you guys can see that she's getting actively involved here to make the girls feel more comfortable uh, with dealing with Epstein. All right. And uh, Christina, don't forget to highlight any chats that come across. Huh? Okay. But you just click the button. Oh, oh, the highlighting thing. Okay, okay, yeah. But just click the button for anybody that, you know, highlight highlight their stuff. Um, Maxwell groomed and befriended minor victim three in London, England between approximately 1994 and 1995, including a period of which a period of time in which Maxwell knew that minor victim three was under the age of 18. Among other things, Maxwell discussed minor victim three's life and family with minor victim three. Maxwell introduced minor victim three to Epstein and arranged for multiple interactions between minor victim three and Epstein. During these interactions, Maxwell encouraged minor victim three to massage Epstein, knowing that Epstein would engage in sex acts with minor victim three during those massages. Minor victim three provided Epstein with the request of massages, and during those massages, Epstein sexually abused minor victim three. Maxwell is aware that Epstein engaged in sexual activity with minor victim three on multiple occasions, including at times when minor victim three was under the age of 18, including in the context of a sexualized massage. Maxwell's efforts to conceal her conduct. In or around 2016, in the context of a deposition as part of civil litigation. Okay, so, all right, now this makes sense. So, uh, Ghislaine, Ghislaine Maxwell, the defendant, repeatedly provided false and perjurious statements under oath regarding among other things, her role in facilitating the, and before I get into this and read this parts to conceal the conduct, I want to let you guys know, when I pulled up her and Epstein's case, they were getting sued out the wooza. I saw so many civil cases, guys, against her and Epstein, and I'll actually show you guys some of them when we get into the trial part, but um, yeah, and the civil litigation, guys, was basically a lot of the victims came forward and sued her and Epstein for you know for money um so clearly they brought her in for a deposition and uh and she lied so uh so under oath regarding among other uh, subjects uh, other subjects her role in facilitating the abuse of minor victims by jeffrey epstein including some of the specific events and acts of abuse detailed above statutory allegations from at least in or about 1994 up to and including in or about 1997 in the southern district of new york and elsewhere Ghislaine Maxwell, the defendant, Jeffrey Epstein, and others, known and unknown, willingly, willfully and knowingly did combine, conspire, confederate, and agree together and with each other to commit an offense against the United States to wit, enticement in violation of Title 18, United States Code, Section 2422. Which, by the way, guys, Title 18 of the United States Code is criminal. These are all the criminal um, statutes. It was a part and object to the conspiracy that Ghislaine Maxwell, the defendant, Jeffrey Epstein, and others known and unknown, would, would and did knowingly persuade, induce, entice, and coerce one and more one and more and more individuals to travel and interstate in foreign commerce to engage in sexual activity for which a person can be charged with a criminal offense in violation of Title 18, United States Code Section 2422. Overt acts. Remember, guys, we talked about conspiracy, right? Conspiracy is an agreement between uh two or more people to commit a crime, but you need an overt act. To uh to ensure to, to make to make the conspiracy charge stick. So now we're gonna actually go over the overt acts which led to the conspiracy charge being um hit. So in other words, you have to have the act where you have to have the conspiracy, then you have to have, have the overt act, then you have the actual act. Okay, does that make sense? So overt acts and further into the conspiracy to affect the illegal object thereof, the following overt acts, among others, were committed in the Southern District of New York and elsewhere. Between in or about 1994 and in or about 1997, when minor victim one was under the age of 18, Maxwell participated in multiple group 
sexual encounters with Epstein and minor victim one in New York and Florida. In or about 1996, when minor victim one was under the age of 18, minor victim one was enticed to travel from Florida to New York for purposes of sexually abusing her at the New York residence in violation of the New York Penal Code Section 130.55. In or about 1996, a minor victim 2 was under the age of 18. Maxwell provided a minor victim 2 with an unsolicited massage in New Mexico during which minor victim 2 was topless. Between in or about 1994 and in or about 1995, when minor victim 3 was under the age of 18, Maxwell encouraged minor victim 3 to provide massages to Epstein in London, England, knowing that Epstein intended to sexually abuse minor victim 3 during those massages. Count two, enticement of a minor to travel to engage in illegal sex acts. The grand jury further charges the allegations contained in paragraphs one through eight of this indictment are repeated and realleged as if fully set forth within. From at least in or about 1994 up to and including in or about 1997 in the Southern District of New York and elsewhere, Glenn Maxwell, the defendant, knowingly did persuade, induce, entice, and coerce an individual to travel in interstate and foreign commerce to engage in sexual activity for which a person can be charged with a criminal offense and attempted to do the same and aided and abetted the same to wit. Maxwell persuaded, induced, enticed, and coerced minor victim one to travel from Florida to New York, New York on multiple occasions on uh, with the intention that minor victim one would engage in one or more sex acts with Jeffrey Epstein in violation of New York Penal Law Section 130.55. Count three, conspiracy to transport minors with intent to engage in criminal sexual activity. The grand jury further are charges. The allegations contained in paragraphs one through eight of this indictment are repeated and realleged as if fully set forth within. And as you guys can see, the same paragraph, right? It was a part and object to the conspiracy that Ghislaine Maxwell, the defendant, Jeffrey Epstein, and others known and unknown would and did knowingly transport an individual who had not attained the age of 18 in interstate and foreign commerce with the intent that the individual engaged in sexual activity for which a person can be charged with criminal offense in violation of Title 18 United States Code Section 2423. So the big thing, guys, is not 18 years old, okay? Over it acts again. In furtherance of the conspiracy and to uh, affect the illegal object thereof, the following over it acts, among others, were committed in the Southern District of New York and elsewhere. Uh, let's see here. I just want to make sure. So we read this through this. Okay, so they're repeating the stuff, right? So now we're in count four, right? So they're basically realleging it, guys, for the other victims, right? So they're each victim is a count, if that makes sense, okay? So same language. Uh, now count four. Transportation of a minor with intent to engage in criminal and sexual activity. Uh, and this one is for victim what? Okay, this is for the Florida victim, I think. All right, we can read this one. All right. Um, the allegations contained in paragraph one through eight of this indictment are repeated and realleged as if fully set forth within. From at least in or about 1994 up to and including in or about 1997 in Southern District of New York and elsewhere, Ghislaine Maxwell, the defendant, knowingly did transport an individual who had not attained the age of 18 in interstate and foreign commerce with the intent that the individual engage in sexual activity for which a person can be charged with a criminal offense and attempted to do so and aided and abetted the same to wit Maxwell arranged for a minor victim one to be transported from Florida to New York, New York on multiple occasions with the intention that minor victim one would engage in one or more sex acts with Jeffrey Epstein in violation of New York penal law, law uh, section 130.55. All right, count five, perjury. The allegations contained in paragraph one through eight of this indictment are repeated and realized as if fully set forth. On or about April 22nd, 2016, in the Southern District of New York, Glenn Maxwell, the defendant, having taken a note to testify truthfully in a deposition in connection with a case then pending before the United States District Court for the Southern District of New York under docket number 15 Civ 7344, knowingly made false material declarations to wit, Maxwell gave the following underlined false testimony. God fucking damn, man. Question. Did Jeffrey Epstein have a scheme to recruit underage girls for sexual massages? If you know. Answer. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> List all the people under the age of 18 that you interacted with at any of Jeffrey Epstein's properties. Answer. I'm not aware of anybody that I interacted with other than obviously the plaintiff who was 17 at this point. God damn. 
Count six, perjury again. The allegations contained in paragraph one through eight of this indictment are repeated and realleged as if fully set forth within. Um, Are the sound effects playing? Give me a one in the chat if you guys can hear the sound effects. Uh, huh? I think they can hear them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the sound effects are working. Never mind. I think we're good. Um, okay. See ones in the chat? You see ones in the chat over there? Give me ones in the chat if you guys can hear the sound effects. It is ones? All right, cool. All right. So, uh, sorry about that, guys. So, um... On or about July 22nd, 2016, so another deposition in the Southern District of New York, Ghislaine Maxwell, the defendant, having taken an oath to testify truthfully in a deposition in connection with the case then pending before the United States District Court uh, for the Southern District of New York under docket number 15 Civ 7344, knowingly made false material declarations to wit Maxwell gave the following underlying false testimony. Were you aware of the presence of sex toys or devices used in sexual activities in Mr. Epstein's Palm Beach house? Answer, no, not that I recall. Oh, man. <laughs> Do you know whether Mr. Epstein possessed sex toys or devices used in sexual activities? Answer, no. <laughs> Question. Other than yourself and the blonde and brunette that you have identified as having been involved in three-way sexual activities, with whom did Mr. Epstein have sexual activities? I wasn't aware that he was having sexual activities with anyone when I was with him other than myself. Oh, my God. <laughs> Question. I want to be sure that I'm clear. Is it your testimony that in the 1990s and 2000s, you were not aware that Mr. Epstein was having sexual activities with anyone other than yourself and the blonde and brunette on those few occasions when they were involved with you? That is my testimony. That is correct. <laughs> is it your testimony that you've never given anybody a massage? Answer. I have not given anyone a massage. <laughs> You never gave Mr. Epstein a massage. Is that your testimony? Answer, that is my testimony. <laughs> you never gave a minor victim to a massage is your testimony. I never gave minor victim to a massage. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and yes. <laughs> and the true bill of indictment is here. The four person signed it. And that is the indictment against her guys lying all over the place. <laughs> She should have done what Epstein did and said, I invoke my Fifth Amendment right to not answer any questions. I'm going to remain silent. That's what Epstein did during these during those depositions, man. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right. So um, let's read some of these chats real quick. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we got uh, 10 bucks from BAN. I read one, uh, 51 million of Epstein's money was transferred to the victims. Isn't this hypocritical? Why would you accept money from a predator who preyed on you? Mm, that's a good question. That is definitely a good question, B-A-N. Um, let's see here. Another one? Okay. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. Okay, I, I see them. And guys, thank you so much for the donations, guys. Also, don't forget to like the video if you're joining in. We got 668 of you guys out here. Let's watch in the video. Hope you guys enjoy it. This is a tough case to get through, guys, I know. But, uh, yeah. Did you see the Wu gang members who got arrested for scamming over $4 million in beer bug relief funds from using unemployment info from 800 people? I did hear about that. Um, maybe I'll break down that case for you. Was it state or federal, bro? Uh, let me know, guys, in the, in the chat if it was state or federal. If it's federal, it'll be a lot easier. Um, another one? Okay. Uh, okay, I, I, I see it. And thank you guys so much for the donations, man. I really appreciate it, guys. Uh, applied for HSI 1811, uh, 1811 a couple days ago. Any tips for getting the offer letter? Oh, congratulations, bro. Yeah, I know that they had an uh, announcement on USA Jobs um, a couple days ago. Um, yeah, man, just uh, l l hey, but best of luck to you, bro. Hope you get the job. Um, let's see here. It's a great career, man. Great agency to work for. Um, and then we got here, Zokai. I think I read this one, uh, became a YouTube member. Welcome. Um, and then, okay, I think we're caught up. All right, cool. So 
as you guys know, uh, she's indicted for some pretty serious crimes, and she ended up going to trial, guys, okay? And she went to trial, and she lost. So uh, let's read this statement real quick from um, uh, from the U.S. Department uh, of Justice. Here, let me move this tab over here. All right. Uh, let me share. All right, ninjas. This might be a little easier to read. Oh, yeah, is that better? Yeah, yeah, that's a lot better. All right, cool. Um, so, statement of U.S. Attorney Damian Williams on the verdict in U.S. versus Ghislaine Maxwell. A unanimous jury has found Ghislaine Maxwell guilty of one of the worst crimes imaginable, facilitating and participating in the sexual abuse of children. Crimes that she committed with her longtime partner and co-conspirator Jeffrey Epstein. The road to justice has been far too long, but today justice has been done. I want to commend the bravery of the girls now grown women who stepped out of the shadows and into the courtroom. Their courage and willingness to face their abuser made this case and today's results possible. I also want to thank the career prosecutors of the Southern District of New York who embraced the victim's quest for justice and have worked tirelessly day in and day out to ensure that Maxwell was held accountable for her crimes. This office will always stand with victims, will always follow the facts wherever they lead, and will always fight to ensure that no one, no matter how powerful and well-connected, is above the law. So, um, and here's the thing, guys. Um, I called it that she was going to lose the trial, okay? Which, as you guys know, I went on the Tim Cast podcast, and, you know, they were trying to tell me, no, man, she's not going to win, bro. I mean, she's she's going to she's gonna beat the case because, you know, uh, I think something like some, some of the FBI agents in, uh, involved in the case did some stupid shit, whatever it is. Um, but I was like, no, bro, um, when it comes to sex trafficking, it, they're going to use the full force of the U.S. government against her. Like, she's done, bro. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I was I was right. They they found her guilty. However, <laughs> this juror, man, fucking cloud chaser. This You can't make this shit up, guys. Um, we got some entertainment coming up here soon. <laughs> so we, we, we definitely got some entertainment coming up here. So uh, stop sharing this one. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and pull up this news article here, all right? Um, and uh, we're going to read through this, and then I'm actually going to take you guys through the actual court documents. My man over here, this fucking guy, bro. <laughs> you can't make this shit up, but let's go on. So Gislaine Maxwell Jarrer to be questioned under oath by trial judge. Oh, shit. New York, Glenn Maxwell, trial juror who indicated during jury selection that he'd never been a sexual abuse victim, will be questioned by the trial judge in court after demands for a new trial by defense attorney sprouted from his public claims that he'd influenced fellow jurors by revealing he was a sex, a, a child sex assault victim. U.S. District Judge Allison J. Nathan said in a written order Thursday, she'll question the juror March 8th at a public court hearing. She also said she rejected requests by Maxwell's attorney, attorneys that she immediately order a new trial and that she questioned other jurors after a second one reportedly revealed during deliberations having suffered a childhood sexual attack. Holy! I'm going to talk about how big of a deal this is for you guys here in a second. I'm going to explain. Some of you guys might be thinking like, Myron, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't know what's going on. I'll break it down for you guys here in a second. Let's get through this article and I'll explain. A copy of the first juror's questionnaire answers filed publicly Thursday showed a man identified in court paper, uh, papers only uh, as juror 50 checked a no box to a question asking if he or a friend or family member had ever been the victim of sexual assault, sexual abuse, uh, or sexual assault, sexual harassment, sorry. The question said, it includes actual or attempted sexual assault or other unwanted sexual advance, including by a stranger, acquaintance, supervisor, teacher, or family member. The juror's questionnaire was attached in an exhibit to the newly unsealed January 19th request for a new trial by Maxwell's lawyers. They noted that all other jurors also said they were not victims of sexual abuse, assault, or harassment. Truthful answers from juror 50 would have led the court and other parties to probe much more deeply into his biases and prejudices, both known and unknown. Had that happened, the record shows that he would have been removed as a potential juror, the lawyers wrote. Maxwell's lawyers said that the juror answered 
other questions falsely, including one asking whether he'd ever been a crime victim. In a February 2nd submission unsealed Thursday, prosecutors said there was substantial reason to believe that any inaccuracy by a juror was an honest mistake and not a deliberate falsehood. Uh, <laughs> we got 666 live viewers right now. How fitting. Oh, man. All right. Let's see if I can play this. And uh, maybe I'll refresh it. It's acting stupid. Uh, no, it's not Firefox. Maybe I'll need to play on Firefox, though. Let's try playing it again for you. Reaction to the guilty verdicts in the Ghislaine Maxwell sex trafficking trial. The disgraced socialites fall from grace now complete after a jury convicted her of recruiting young girls for Jeffrey Epstein to abuse. Arthur Chien joining us now with a closer look at the verdict and what's next, Arthur. Laurie, as you know, conventional wisdom in trials is that the longer a jury deliberates, the better sign it is for the defense. And as things carried on this week, when jurors asked for more information from the court, Maxwell's eyes reportedly lit up but tonight after five full days of deliberations maxwell has been found guilty of sex and this trial took a month guys approximately so this is kind of a recap of the entire situation trafficking and conspiracy a stoic elaine maxwell stood as a guilty verdict was read finding the british socialite guilty on five of six counts the outcome a relief to the woman who have spent years fighting to hold her account fyi guys in federal court there's no cameras allowed which is why they do sketch artists which I think is actually kind of good. I don't know. When they put cameras in there, it becomes a fucking, you know, clown world. Accountable for helping Jeffrey Epstein recruit and groom teenage victims for sexual abuse. After the verdict, U.S. Attorney Damian Williams called her crimes one of the worst imaginable. The road to justice has been far too long. That's him giving a statement with a potato. I don't know what that camera is. Terrible. But that's the U.S. Attorney, guys, for the Southern District of New York. But today... Justice has been done. Prosecutors built the core of the case around four victims who all testified during the month-long trial. Its central figures, the epitome of power and privilege. Epstein cultivated relationships with wealthy tycoons, U.S. presidents. and That's Epstein during his deposition, by the way, guys, which he was smart. He was like, uh, yeah, I'm going to take the fifth. I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> fifth. British royalty, often with Maxwell by his side. Oh, yeah, there's uh, Prince Andrew, who uh, has this compromising picture. I will show you guys what I'm talking about here. As you guys know, oh, yeah, there's my there's my file of all my stuff. Um, I'll show you guys the picture right now. Uh, oh, man, what is that? That's your boy, Prince Andrew, with Ghislaine and the 17-year-old girl who actually sued uh prince andrew and won a settlement for an undisclosed amount of money and i think she also sued um she sued Ghislaine as well uh her last name is gitarif or something like that i can't pronounce it starts it's like a it's a unique i think it's german it's like g-u-i-t something um but yeah that's her um and uh and prince andrew and Ghislaine right there and prince andrew said he did not know her and here's this picture so uh no, that's definitely a um, uh... so anyway okay bank records show more than 30 million dollars in payments from epstein to maxwell after the verdict maxwell left the courtroom without hugging her lawyers as she had in previous days we firmly believe in glenn's innocence that's her attorney obviously we are very disappointed with the verdict Jurors rejected the defense argument of a vindictive prosecution aimed at delivering Maxwell to the victims deprived of justice from Epstein. The jurors did accept the parallel testimony of victims that Maxwell coaxed them into giving massages to Epstein, which turned sexual. As for whether Maxwell might now cooperate and hand over names, former federal prosecutor Doug Byrne says not likely, since Maxwell is seen as the epicenter of the criminal enterprise. Indeed. You know, it's almost analogous to, you know, a supplier of narcotics and a consumer. If there's going to be any cooperation, it'll be the defense seeking it. I'm not sure they're going to be granted that opportunity. Now, a sentencing date has yet to be set. Maxwell faces a maximum of 40 years in prison. Legal experts tell us she will likely get much less, but will still spend decades behind bars. And Laurie, she is currently 60 years old.
All right. right. So thank you. That's no bueno. She kind of old. Um, so, uh, so <laughs> that's a sketch artist one. So, all right. So you guys get the idea there. Um, let's see here. Okay. So you know what? We'll we'll go. <laughs> I'll read this paragraph here, and then I'll actually show you guys the court documents. In interviews with news outlets after the trial, the juror said he revealed to fellow jurors during deliberations that, like some Epstein victims, he'd been sexually abused as a child, and he said he convinced other jurors that a victim's imperfect memory of sex abuse doesn't mean it didn't happen. So let me explain the gravity of this situation, guys. So as you guys know, not many cases go to trial. So when a case does go to trial, you have to give the defendant, um, and I think it's just based off the Sixth Amendment, an impartial, fair trial judged by their peers, okay? And to be impartial, you need to be able to um, look at the crime objectively without your feelings, okay? So whenever you, because I've done this myself before, I've went to trial before. So anytime you do jury selection, guys, you need to ask questions of the jurors about their background, what they do for work, um, their personal experience. Um, and then depending on the crime, you're going to ask them certain questions based on the crime that is going to go to trial. With crimes like this, right, sex crimes, they ask a fuck ton of questions about the victim's background, have you ever been abused, et cetera, because they know that it is going to affect their ability to be what? Impartial. So this juror knows that he's about to be on the jury for one of the biggest sex cases, sex crime cases in the United States next to R. Kelly, all right? And that's going to be a pivotal part of the questions asked in the juror questionnaire. Have you been a victim of any type of sex crime? And if he had said yes in those questionnaires, I'm going to keep it a thousand with you guys. The lawyers would have got rid of him. They would not have let him sit on the, the, uh, on the jury. Okay. Um, now, when it comes to federal, the judge asked the questions. However, the AUSA and the prosecutor are there. And basically, guys, what jury selection really is, is jury, it's, it's not even jury selection. It's more about like jury elimination. They eliminate jurors that are not that they feel will not be impartial based on the juror's background. So I'll give you guys an example. Like me, I would be a terrible juror. They will never allow me to be a juror because I'm former law enforcement. They're going to be like, no, you're always going to go on the prosecution side. So the defense, nine out of ten times, is going to kick me out. They're not going to let me be a juror, okay? Um, so that's the job of jury selection is to put an impartial jury there judged by 12 of your peers. So. Clearly, this guy not only lied on the juror questionnaire, he was a victim of a sex crime, which affects his ability to be impartial. And then on top of that, he convinced the other jurors during deliberation that um, to believe the victims because uh, Ghislaine's team had brought in a, uh, an expert witness that sh that basically was able to show that um their recollection was not all there, okay? Because remember, guys, that Ghislaine's team, their job was to make sure that um, that they could show that the victims, this was a money grab, um, and that Epstein was the real guy, like basically like kind of skirting accountability. That was the defense's job here. And also to paint the victims as um, money-hungry clout chasers, for lack of a better term. That's what the defense's job was to do. So, um. So that is the issue here. And not only that, now a second juror has been potentially identified as also being a victim of um, of, of, uh, of a sex crime, okay? Which, again, there's nothing wrong being a sex, uh, uh, you know, a, a victim of a sex crime. However, you cannot be impartial by being a victim of a sex crime on a sex crime case. Done. So uh, we're going to break this down a little bit more. But so... I'm going to show you guys education part again. So we're going to transition over. Well, let me read these chats real quick, actually, so I don't lose them. Um, we got uh, Sprout, $2. Thank you so much. Sprout, 23 We got um, 
Ariel, uh, Bib, uh, Bibilonia. What names do you think she's hiding? <laughs> Who knows, my friend? Who knows? Potentially some powerful people. Uh, Captain Sadir, 20 bucks. Uh, or I think, uh, well, $2 US, I think. Sorry. This is the topic. This is of the topic, but do you watch anime? Uh, yes, I do. Um, Dragon Ball Z, bro, is the way to go. I don't watch any other anime except for that, really. Oh, and then I also like um, Case Closed. Um, in America, this is illegal, but in France, sex age is 15. Yeah, I, I some some countries have different um ages of consent. In France, I think you guys also drink at like 15, so y'all don't care out there. Um, <clears throat> and here's the thing, guys. A lot of states, the age of consent is 15 as well, but federally, it's still illegal. Um, oh, read this one. Thank you so much, Ban, for that. Uh, and then we got here. Okay, I think we caught up. Everybody, what was that? Oh, another one just came in. Okay, and we got Andrew Cardenas. Andrew Cardenas with the twenty dollars super chat. Thank you so much. And yo, Don DeMarco to all you guys. Don DeMarco for all you guys. Why is Ghislaine still denying everything when the feds have such strong evidence against her? Has she not been offered a plea deal? This is crazy. How do so many jurors turn out to be victims? Yeah, bro. I mean, like I said, they, 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 they the government did a fantastic job of proving their case, but the fucking jurors fucked up. All right, and I'm gonna show you guys this a little bit. This is hilarious. Um, Sprout twenty three five bucks for mouse trails. Go to settings, then mouse, then mouse properties. Tab pointer options. Check display pointers trails. Then okay. <laughs> Yo, you're the fucking man, bro. <clears throat> um, go to settings, then mouse, then mouse properties, and tab pointer. Okay, I will. Uh, I'll keep that on screen for a second here, um, because we got some things to pull up. All right, so uh, all right. So now, guys, I'm going to share screen with y'all real fast. So I'm going to teach you guys how to find a case on Pacer real fast. Okay. Here on FedEx, we educate y'all, my ninjas. So, <clears throat> so uh, remember, guys, so this is how you do it, right? So you're going to go on Google, right? And you're going to go. So, for example, I know that the case in the Southern District of New York, right? So I go Pacer, Southern District of New York, bang, right? And then I click this. All right. So I'm already logged in, but this is where it's going to bring you, right? Click this, and then bang, it's going to give you your login stuff, right? Sign in. Okay, now I'm going to go query. Then, see, I already have the case here populated, but normally, this is what you do. You type in the last name, all right? So see, as you guys can see, this is my searches, right, from the other cases we've done. And then, oh, there's my government. Oh, shit! No, nah, it's Ghislaine. I didn't search myself on here, just like some stupid fucking shit. <clears throat> anyway, so as you guys can see, um, here is um, all her stuff, right? So <laughs> just, uh, you know, let, let's go through this real quick. I'm going to show you guys how many times she's been sued. All right, look at this. Civil case, civil case, civil case. Oh, this is the victim right here. So this girl right here, they can't see it? Okay, my bad. Thanks, Christina. Uh, let me enlarge it for y'all real fast. Is that better? Got y'all, baby. I got y'all. Okay. Uh, good catch, Christina. All right. So this right here, this is the girl. This the, Remember this girl that I showed y'all? Um, For our boy Prince Andrew? This chick? This is her. This is Guifer. I mean, I probably mispronounced. I'm butchering it. But this is her. Look, here's here's the uh, civil case. Oh, this is probably the one that she fucking lied at. <laughs> it's from 2016. So yeah, this is probably the depth. This is where she probably lied. <laughs> so here she is, plaintiff. Okay, and she sued uh, Prince Andrew, uh, Prince Andrews as well. See, defendant, bang, and then and then here is the the um the civil case, guys. This is all of it right here. Affidavit and declaration, right? Okay, order. It's from 2019. Um, let's see here. This is the complaint right here. Case has been indexed and assigned to judge. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, this is probably because this case was used used in that criminal case. <laughs> All right. So yeah, as you guys can see, here she is. Right. This is a plaintiff. Right. Civil case. Was this no no no? It was seven three four four. Hmm. Let's see if we can find that one. But this is this is the girl that was in that picture that I showed y'all. 
It was seven. I remember it was seven three four four, or seven some four four three or something like that. Uh, but yeah, as you guys can see, see these are all her civil cases, right? Uh, and then this is the criminal case right here. Remember, guys, I said CR, which means it's criminal, right? USA versus Maxwell versus Ghislaine Maxwell. Same thing, guys. It's the same exact case. Don't worry. Don't worry about that. And then here's the other. Here's another civil one right here. So 15 and 16, right? And then that's just under one name, under another one. Uh, this one is another civil case. Uh, 17, boom. Jane Doe, 43 versus Epstein et al., right? So there, there you go. That's another civil case of them suing Epstein and everybody else. Here she is again. Vernon versus Maxwell et al., civil case. Latham et al., the 1950 D trust et al. This is probably... Um, Epstein's um trust since he's since he passed away and they're suing her as well, right? So filed in 2020, 2020, right? New lawsuits. And then here she is again under her full name. Which one is this one? Yeah, Vernon versus Epstein et al. Colleen McMahon presiding. Yeah, see? So they're they're coming after her, man. So these are all civil cases, guys. So anyway, let's go back to the criminal case that we're looking at. Just want to show you guys how she's getting sued. Epstein was even worse. If you type his name in, bro. He has all kinds of lawsuits coming at him. All kinds. All right. Uh, here, I'm going to screenshot this. Uh, Eric, can you screenshot those, those instructions right there? I'll take it off so people can see what's going on here. All right. So, okay. So now that we got the case here, right? So, okay. So going back to what I was saying. So you type in the name and then you click docket report. Okay. So, so, so let's go back on this so I don't confuse y'all. So, right. You go in here. Maxwell, boom, here's a case. Run a query, right? You don't have to have the case number. You could just do it by last name. But since I already searched, that's why it comes up. Then you click Docker report, right? Boom, here she is. So here is the judge. Okay, here she is, the defendant one, right? Okay, this is her attorneys, right? She has a whole team. These are the charges which she was found guilty of, right? Five out of six. All right. Then, um, okay, of course. Interested party reporters of committee for freedom of press. So see, look, there's reporters in here and shit. This is how you know it's a big case when they have people like that. Intervener. Okay, this guy is re representing probably the victims. Yeah, and victim. Yeah, boom. See, now here's a plaintiff, United States of America. Here's the AUSA. This is the lead AUSA, first chair. Second chair, and then third chair. Damn that! That four is this four AUSA five? Hot damn! This was the indictment that we just read. Okay, yeah, they were going, bro. They, they. they I'll tell you all this, man. Five AUSAs on a case. This is not normal whatsoever. But obviously, this is a high-profile case, right? And this, guys, is how you see everything on the case. Okay, so as you guys can see, a lot of filings, right? A lot of stuff going on here, okay? And this is how you look at a case on Pacer. Um, so, yeah, this is her arraignment. This is, like, right after she got arrested. And this is uh, normally, guys, a bunch of stuff happens at the beginning when you get arrested, you know. And because of COVID, they had to put in all these motions to make sure that it's okay that they do it through teleconference, et cetera, okay? Because as you guys know, New York is a clown world over there. And, uh, you know, they, they take uh, the beer bug extremely serious up north. So, um so yeah, look at all like all these filings, right? Uh, waiver of right to be present at criminal proceeding, right? Because it's obviously, um, you know, uh, through COVID, right? So she had to do everything probably through teleconference. So this is what a lot of these orders are for. Okay, now let's get into our let's 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 go into the juicy stuff here because a lot of this stuff is you know monotonous uh, court documents that really isn't. Um, not not really relevant to us, okay? A lot of it is like, you know, motions here and there. Okay, I need more extensions. I need time. This is why the court system takes so goddamn long, all right? Sealed documents. These are probably financial affidavits, right? Um, So, all right, so let's see here. <laughs> Actually, you know what? So, uh, oh, we got to go way down. This is all 2021. Right. This is leading up to the trial. Right. As we know, she got found guilty uh, on the 28th of um, the 28th. And then she goes on the 28th. Right. She gets found guilty. And then this fucking juror, guys, 
this is clown world shit here. So let me show y'all. So she goes, so amicabus curate brief on the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers. So they filed this document, okay, because on behalf of Ghislaine, because they felt that she got an unfair trial as well, okay? And then here she is. This is her team files. Motion for new trial. Document followed by Ghislaine Maxwell. We're going to read through this bad boy. This one has some uh, some funny shit on here that I want to show y'all. And then memorandum for opposition by the United States. So here, so they file this on the 24th. Hey, motion for new trial. Yo, like the fucking video, by the way. Ain't nobody breaking down these cases like this with y'all. Who's going to go and pace her? Read through the stuff with you guys. Show you guys what the fuck is going on. Show you guys the court documents. I'm actually going to go through the court documents with you guys. Education, edutainment, and... We're the fucking best, okay? Give me, I'm giving myself a Dr. Marco right now. Because ain't nobody else doing this for y'all right now, breaking down these cases to this level of degree, uh, to this de- uh, to this level. Uh, Captain Sadir. Uh, oh, shit. Hold on. He goes, uh, cool, you are like a detective in your vids, so I would recommend Death Note or Conan anime if you are interested in criminal slash cases. Thanks for your vids. No problem, my friend. Thank you so much for the support. Um, but yeah, guys, like the video. We've got 700 of you guys in here right now watching. You guys could be anywhere else on a Sunday night, but you guys are here with me. And uh, what? One more? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, okay, one more super chat before I pull up this stuff because this shit is comedy, bro. Um, First, I have a super chat of someone. You're awesome, Iron. Thank you so much, Cali209. Love you, man. Appreciate the love. Uh, All right. So, yeah, man. Like, guys, nobody could break this stuff down for you guys. I'm a, I used to, I used to do these cases. I used to look through a patient like this because, as an agent, as a case agent, guys, you have to keep track with your case. You got to know when court, uh, you know, court dates are there. The AUSA is going to call you. Hey, that you says a prosecutor, by the way, he's going to tell you, hey, I need you to be here at this court hearing. I need you to fucking testify, guys. I've testified hundreds of times. Hundreds of times I've testified under oath. So it's nothing to me. So I'm very aware of how the court system works because I was a very active agent. I was doing cases. So um, all I got to say is this is a big fuck up. If I was a prosecutor right now, I'd be livid. This is craziness. You literally just want a trial. Going to trial is not fun, guys. It, it, it's, it's a lot of stress. It's extremely difficult to prepare for trial. I remember I went to trial. Um, you know, I'll pull up a case for you guys on a case that I went to trial on back in the day. Um, if I have time, I'll pull it up for you guys at the, at the end of the stream. And I'm going to start breaking down some of the cases I did back in the day when I was an agent, guys, for y'all. Um, oh, Tory Meg, Christina, you want to give them a quick uh, update on that? Because they're asking about the Tory Lanez thing. You've been you've been researching that. Tell the people what's going on. Okay. Because they've been asking me a million times about that before I break, in, break into this. So we have court documents. Um, but the only thing is that it's just not clear enough. And I feel like we need better ones. So I have someone going to the courthouse this week to get the rest of them. As for the police report, we cannot get that. They won't allow it. We have to have like, I think be a blood relative or like an attorney. Someone's probably got to go to the police station to get it. No, they, the guy, the guy went, they wouldn't allow him. They want to give it to him? No. Cause you have to get like, uh, you have to literally have permission. Fucking clown world, bro. In California. So. Fucking we'll California clown world. But, I mean, I, by this week, we should have Tori. We, we could file a FOIA, Freedom of Information Act, but that's a pain in the ass. It could take months. Let me see if I know maybe like an attorney. Maybe. Okay. We could, Aisha, I could talk to Aisha. It's fucking clown world. Something. But yeah, um, this week we should have something for Tori. Yeah. We have like, the, I think I gave you the affidavit. Uh, but it's just like, it's just, it's not clear enough. No, no, you gave me like his arrest document shit. Was that it? Yeah. Well, don't worry, guys. We'll get it. Someone said two weeks, sex offenders, two weeks in a row. Come on, Myron. Hey, E, bro, uh, this is what the people wanted, bro. They wanted uh, Epstein and G- Ghislaine. You got to do both of them. You know what I'm saying? So that's why we're here. So anyway, uh, let's pull this bad boy up. Okay, so um, our boy, uh, juror number 50, um, I'm going to show you guys. <sighs> Man. Okay. Let me, uh, is this it? Nope, that's not it. They said March. How, what was that? They said March 2nd, I feel like. They said new, what? You know how Chris always says March? March? Oh, yeah, yeah, you kept saying I feel like. Yeah, yeah, you you already know they're going to tell you that. <laughs> you should you should have known that. I know. I need to take a look. Okay, so these are a couple of the documents. So I'm going to, hold on, let me minimize this one. So this is where we're going to go here. Okay. Um, memorandum, uh for neutral 
no, this is not what we want. We do not want the motion. We want this right here. Okay. Documents filed by Ghislaine, right? So, so, so her defense, guys, credit to them. They did a fantastic job of, okay, and this is, you view the document. Hey, I'm paying $7 for you guys, man. I love y'all. Yeah. It, oh, yeah. By the way, guys, it costs money to pull this shit up. Um, so, but I don't give a fuck. We're, we're, we're doing this, baby. And I'm just going to save it right now as well. Maxwell. Maxwell uh, file. I'm going to put that under Epstein. Maxwell. See, I keep everything organized for y'all, man. I got the files always ready to go, baby. All right. So, all right. So here it is, right? Um, And let me enlarge this bad boy as well. Let me make sure this thing is open for y'all. Okay. Let me enlarge it. What was the mouse things, right? So I can, so I can uh, highlight again. Was it mouse settings or some um, shit? I'll tell you right now. All right. So, okay, guys. So, United States District Court, Southern District of New York, United States of America versus Ghislaine. This is the case, right? Ghislaine Maxwell's motion for a new trial. And this is filed by her defense team. Okay? Okay. So, uh, settings, then mouse, then mouse properties. Oh, God. That's a lot of work. All right. I'll just continue on. I think I can highlight this shit. Let me see if I can. Oh, I can highlight. That works. That, that, that We good now. We good. We good. I can highlight it. All right. All right. We're good. All right. So as you guys can see, this is a whole fucking table of contents, okay? We're not going to go through all of this because I don't want to put you guys to sleep. Um, but <laughs> what we're going to go through is some of the good stuff that I read through on this, okay? Um, <laughs> all right. Let's see here. Yeah, all this. Yeah, yeah. The, the, her, her defense team is not playing around, as you guys can see. They are not fucking around for them to file this introduction jury number 50 says he was a victim of sexual assault and sexual abuse as a child when he told his fellow jurors of this abuse during deliberations the room went dead silent juror number 50 has told several media outlets that he drew on his personal experience as a victim to persuade fellow jurors to believe miss maxwell's accusers despite the inconsistencies and holes in their stories, even though they delayed disclosing their allegations against Ms. Maxwell, and in spite of expert testimony from Dr. Elizabeth Loftus, casting significant doubt on the reliability of their claim memories. This was unfair and prejudicial to Ms. Maxwell, and it all would have been avoided if juror number 50 had told the truth during Vore Dyer, Vore, Vore Dyer which, guys, Vore Dyer is, the, is basically the, the fancy way of saying is jury, the jury selection process, okay? But he didn't. To the contrary, Jury number 50 repeatedly and unequivocally denied having been the victim of sexual abuse and he denied having any experience that would affect his ability to serve fairly and impartially as a juror. Had juror 50 told the truth, he would have been challenged and excluded for a cause. Holy! And we're going to laugh here in a second, guys, about how this nigga fucking fucked this one up, all right? The Sixth Amendment of the United States Constitution guarantees trial by jury. Fundamental to that guarantee is the promise that the jury will be comprised of 12 dispassionate individuals who will fairly and impartially decide based on the evidence or lack of evidence and not on their personal predilections and biases, whether the government has proved its case beyond a reasonable doubt. For Dyer plays an essential role in this process, jury selection, and it depends on potential jurors to truthfully answer material questions put to them by the court and the parties. That did not happen here. Jury number 50 did not truthfully respond to perhaps the most important question put to potential jurors about their personal experiences, a question that pertained directly to the core allegations against Miss Maxwell. Whether they had been a victim of sexual assault or abuse, jury number 50's false answer undermined for Dyer, resulted in a jury that was not fair and impartial, and deprive Ms. Maxwell of her constitutional right by to trial by jury. I can't even express to you guys how much of a monumental fuck up this is. For them to put that money together, go to trial for a fucking month, fly those witnesses in, house those witnesses, prepare those witnesses, get the agents prepared. Have the testimony ready to go. Having all the reports, the discovery, disclosing all the evidence, getting all the fucking um, uh, expert witnesses in line, flying people in, 
This all costs money and time, guys. They might have to redo all this again because this guy, which I'm going to show you guys what this nigga did, bro. This is some hilarious stuff. I'm sorry. I know you guys are like, Myron, this is a professional podcast. Why are you referring to him as a nigga? Well, I will say this. He was very stupid. And when I show you guys the shit that this guy was doing, you guys are going to see why I have this this temperament that I have right now. Um, Andrew Cardini, 20 bucks. What a burn. This seems so calculated by putting victims of sens sensual assault as jurors. It obviously going to throw everything off and it can easily be considered a mistrial SMH. So here, guys, they go through the uh, the factual background, right, of what the jury questionnaire is. Okay, it's a 22-page questionnaire containing 50 questions. Groups of 100 or more jurors were gathered in the courthouse in the morning and afternoon sessions. Okay, but let's go over what this dude fucking did. All right. So specifically, question 48. So this is one of the questions that that's that's very important. Have you or a friend or family member ever been the victim of sexual harassment, sexual abuse, or sexual assault? This includes actual or attempted sexual assault or other unwanted sexual advances including by stranger, acquaintance, supervisor, teacher, or media family member. The questionnaire offered three answers. Yes, yes, friend or family member, and no. <laughs> and he said no. And then finally, question 50, asked potential jurors if there was any experience that they had that might affect their ability to serve fairly and impartial as a juror. 694 individuals answered the questionnaire, juror 50's questionnaire. Juror 50 questionnaire is attached as exhibit one under the penalty of perjury. Juror 50 answered these questions as follows. Question 13. Yes. Juror 50, number 50, could decide the case based solely on the evidence or lack of evidence and not based on bias, sympathy, or prejudice. Oh, man. <laughs> Question 25. He answered no, had never been the victim of a crime. <laughs> Question 42. No. There was nothing about the nature of the allegations against Miss Maxwell that might make this difficult, make it difficult for Juror 50 to be fair and impartial. <laughs> Question number 43. Question, juror 50 answered no. Did not have any views about laws concerning the age of consent that would affect his ability to be fair and impartial. <laughs> Question 44. Question, juror said no. Did not have any views about the laws governing sex trafficking and sex crimes against minors that would affect his ability to be fair and impartial. But wait, there's more. Question 47. No, would not have any difficulty assessing the credibility of alleged victims of sexual assault or abuse, just as he would assess the credibility of any other witness. <laughs> Finally, and most importantly, juror number 50 answered no when asked in question 48 if he had ever been the victim of been the victim of victim of sexual harassment, sexual abuse, or sexual assault, including actual or attempted sexual assault or other unwanted sexual advance, including by a stranger, acquaintance, supervisor, teacher, or family member. All right. And uh, yo, yo, it gets better. All right. I'm going to pass through some of this because this is, as you guys can see, this is a very lengthy document. It's uh, 57 pages. Um, the defense uh, really put together a really good um, argument here. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to go through their evidence on why they, uh, they're, man, they're coming at this guy's neck. That's all I got to say. Watch, look at this shit. <laughs> you cannot make this shit up, bro. So let's see here. Uh, okay. <laughs> so here's the actual evidence. All right. So, um, you know, they make the arguments here, right? They make all their arguments here, right? Conclusion, etc. And I'm going to come back to this, but let me show you all the evidence, okay? <laughs> Exhibit one. Preliminary instructions. Juror number ID 50, okay? You are sworn to give true and complete answers to questions in this questionnaire. This questionnaire is designed to help simplify and shorten the jury selection process. The purpose of the questionnaire is to determine whether prospective jurors can decide this case impartially based on the evidence presented at the trial and the legal instructions given by the presiding judge. And this is basically the juror instructions, guys, right? Do not discuss your questions and answers or this or the case with anyone now or until further instructed by the court. Do not do your own research on the case, right? And they give you all these explicit instructions, guys, okay, on... um 
And remember, you are sworn to give true and complete answers to all questions. Um, there are no right or wrong answers, only truthful answers. So, <sighs> so they're putting the actual document here, right? They're, this is his shit, all right? This is the summary of the case. This is a criminal case. The defendant, G Ghislaine Maxwell, so he knows who it is, all right? Strike number one. <laughs> has been charged in this indictment with various criminal offenses. The indictment is not evidence. It simply contains the charges referred to as counts, and the government intends to prove the jury at trial beyond a reason to the jury at, uh, at trial beyond a reasonable doubt. The charges stem from allegations <clears throat> that from at least 1994 through 2004, the defendant conspired with an aide and abetted Jeffrey Epstein to entice minors to travel and engage in <laughs> criminal sexual activity to transport minors to engage in sexual criminal activity and to engage in sex trafficking a minor. And then basically they talk about the indictment, which we talked about, guys, right? I read it for y'all. Miss Maxwell has not pled guilty to all charges. Miss Maxwell is presumed innocent, and before she can be found guilty on any charge, the jury must find that the government has proven each element of the crime beyond a reasonable doubt. Schedule, okay? So they give them the schedule. They pulled all this shit, bro, all right? Like, right? They're telling them what time you have to show up. We'll commence on Monday, November 29th. The trial is expected to last about six weeks. Generally, trial will be held five days per week, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Trial will not be held. So this is all the instructions, right? Okay. Please answer the following questions. Ability to serve. So, so he's saying no to everything, right, as you guys can see. <laughs> uh, he said yes to this. Oh, man. Okay. So do you accept this principle? Okay. So under law, the facts are for, for the jury to determine and the law is for the judge to determine. Okay. You are required to accept the law as the judge explains it to you, even if you do not like the law or disagree with it. And you must determine the facts according to the, those instructions. Do you accept this principle and will you be able to follow the judge's instruction of selected to serve on this jury? Yes. <laughs> right. So these are all his answers. Right. And um, the, the the ones in questions, right? What, what was the main ones that everyone was worried about? 48, right? So let's go all the way down to 48. <laughs> Guys, like the video, by the way, all right? Because ain't nobody breaking this stuff down like this. All right? So 48. Have you or a friend or a family member ever been the victim of sexual harassment, sexual abuse, or sexual assault? This includes actual or attempted sexual assault or other unwanted sexual advances, including by a stranger, acquaintance, supervisor, teacher, or family member. No. Is there any other experience that you or anyone close to you has had that may affect your ability to serve fairly and impartially as a juror in this case? No. Do you wish for any particular answers to remain confidential and to not go beyond the judge, counsel, and the defendant because the answer would embarrass you or otherwise seriously compromise your privacy? He said no. Guess what? Now it's all coming out, buddy. It's all coming out now, man. <laughs> and, yep, sign on the 4th day of November. I, juror 50, declare under penalty of perjury that the foregoing answers set forth in this jury questionnaire are true and correct to the best of my knowledge and belief. I have not discussed my answers with others or received assistance in completing the questionnaire. Holy! <laughs> so he is about to get hit with the same exact crime that he convicted Ghislaine for perjury <laughs> under oath. <laughs> and here's the problem this woman who clearly was found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt is probably gonna get a mistrial but let, let, hold on it get, there's but hold, wait there's more guys exhibit two all right these are the jur the the the, the jury instructions all right this is the this is the the actual is this the fucking teleprompter shit oh no this is the vordire oh yeah because everything oh man 
Okay. <laughs> so guys, what this is is the um this is the actual voir dire because everything in court, there's there's someone there writing it down. All right. So this is it. The court, juror number 50, juror present. Good afternoon, juror 50. I'm Judge Nathan. It's nice to meet you in person and thank you for your time. So this is the entire conversation, all right, in court. The transcripts. All right. <laughs> Yo, okay. So they got him dead to rights on that, right? Because now they got everything he said in court is is there. All right. So what else here? Oh no, hold on. There's more. I'm trying to find it. There was some other shit here that was crazy. That they found that was fucking wild. Hold on. Exhibit one. This is the conclusion, but this is not what it was. Uh Okay, so they make their arguments here. You know, it might be more arguments. So yeah, they're using they're using cases like uh cases that set precedent before in situations that are similar to this. A bunch of redacted shit because it's probably his real name. Okay, you know what? I think I know which document it is. All right, let me uh let me pull it up for y'all. Give me one second, guys. Actually, while uh, can you read some of these chats real quick, uh, Christina, while I pull this up? Um, okay. Am I on thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can hear you. Go ahead. Um, Eric999. Could it be possible that maybe... Wait, I just lost it. Okay. Could it be possible that maybe powerful people that knew that Epstein and or was included in that group try to use... I said it. Oh, coercion on junior, junior number fifty-one. Potentially, who knows? I can really see that. I mean, you know, we can really we can go it. ahead and uh, hit some conspiracy theories here. <laughs> okay, so what was that? Okay, um, SCJ's any update on the Mari Bandit K block? Uh. I can find out. Yeah, we can we can look into it. Um, but I mean, they they got him, bro. Pretty much, like they 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 found him, man. Yeah, I mean, I can double check and see if there's any more like different court records, but okay. okay. Keep going through the chats. I'm pulling this stuff up here. Yeah, I'm just trying to see which ones I missed. Um, did we get? Did you get the angel candidate one? What was that? Did you get this one? The whatever. The uh, nine, the angel card. Uh, I. Probably did, okay. but yeah, get the other ones that I might have missed. Yeah, no, that's what I'm looking for right now. Um, just make sure. And guys, do me a quick favor. Like the video, by the way, because uh, it wasn't easy, um, you know, getting all this ready. It was quite a bit of work. That's actually just it. That was it? Okay. Yeah, just two. Cool. Um, so what I'm looking for right now, guys, is this guy actually went to the media and um, gave a bunch of interviews. Which I'm trying to find the fucking because they 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 outlined all of it, man, and it was like really good. I'm trying to find it for y'all, and I had it in one of my goddamn documents here saved. I'm just trying to remember which one it was. But let's see here. You know what? Maybe we might have to go back to the pacer to the pacer uh thing. If not, then I can. I can definitely do y'all a favor and summarize it. But um but yeah, as you guys can see, this is a serious issue because you went through that entire trial and now, you know, it might you might have to do it again. And that is not that is no bueno, man, because trials are not easy to prepare for, guys. And they are literally very difficult to prepare for. Um, because they take a lot of time and they cost a lot of money as well. Um, so let me go back here. Because they had his social media, all that shit, bro. And I'm trying to find it. Um, oh, here we go. All right. All right. It's lit now. All right. <laughs> okay. So um, we got it, guys. We got it, gentlemen. Don't worry. We got it. We fucking got it. That was easy. All right. And I apologize for that delay there, guys. As you guys know, this is a lot of stuff. This is a 106-page page document right here. So um, 
All right. I'm just going to the top of it so you guys. Um, okay, so they're talking here. Okay, so November 16th. They're, so they're talking about him preparing for for um, uh, for um Vordire. And then these are the questions that he answered, right, which they're going to redact because he probably gave personal information that can identify him. Um, and then the court inquired whether parties had any follow-up questions. Okay. Denied any bias or inability to be fair and impartial because his answers to the questionnaire did not raise any red flags about his ability to serve as a fair and impartial during the case involving alleged sexual assault, sexual abuses. Miss Maxwell's attorneys did not propose any follow-up questions, which is true. They would have definitely kicked him off the off the jury, guys, if if they had found out that he had um, been assaulted, but he sexually has, uh, been a victim of a sex crime in the past. Um, and then six hundred and ninety-four potential jurors answered the 50, que 50 uh, questionnaire. Right. Okay. Of the 12 deliberating jurors, none disclosed their questionnaires that they were victims of sexual abuse, sexual assault, or sexual harassment. As we now know, however, Juror 50 was not telling the truth uh, when he denied being a victim of crime or being the uh, victim of sexual abuse, sexual assault, or sexual harassment. And as explained below, it appears a second deliberating juror was also untruthful when they denied being a victim of sexual abuse, sexual assault, or sexual harassment. So we got two jurors, guys, that quite frankly shouldn't have been on the pet on, on the jury. Okay. Um, so here we go. Juror 50 statements to the media. Guys. Get the fucking popcorn, all right? Because we're about to have some entertainment. Matter of fact, Christina, can you get me some popcorn on this real fast? Yeah, we have some in the back. Uh, that, that drawer up top on the, on the left. This is about to get good, guys. Like the fucking video, because we're about to have some entertainment. On January 4, 2022, less than one week after the jury returned its ver verdict, Lucia Osborne Crowley of The Independent published an article based on an interview with juror number 50, Going by the name Scotty David, juror number 50 told Miss Osborne Crowley that this verdict is for the victims and shows <laughs> and shows that you can found, be found guilty no matter your status. Juror number 50 admitted to being a victim of sexual assault and abuse, telling Miss Osborne Crowley that he revealed the abuse to the jury and that his story was fundamental to the jury's verdict. According to jury, jury, jury number 50, the jury room went dead silent when he shared his story. You know why they went dead silent, you fucking dummy? They went dead silent because you committed a crime. You perjured yourself. You lied under oath, said you were never a victim of a sex crime when you were being a juror on a sex trafficking case where that is a critical component to the crime that you are being. <laughs> I got some boom sugar pop here, guys. I hope you guys are enjoying this again, some popcorn as well, because this is fucking comedy that this guy would go at. The, the jury went, went silent, bro, because you're not supposed to be a victim of a sex crime if you're serving on a jury for a sex crime you're supposed to be impartial this is not to attack victims of sex crimes or whatever guys i'm not saying that hey man he probably was a victim and it was terrible but you cannot be impartial if you are a victim for the crime that you are sitting on the jury of man you stupid incredible i can't believe this shit but hold on. It gets better. All right. Jury number 50 explains to Miss Osborne Crowley how his own experience helped the jury to come believe the alleged victim victims despite the holes and inconsistencies in their stories. I know what happened when I was sexually abused. I remember the color of the carpet, the walls. Some of it can be replayed like a video. Relying on his own experiences, Juror number 50 refused to credit the testimony of Dr. Elizabeth Loftus, Ms. Maxwell's expert witness on memory. None of Dr. Loftus' testimony, said juror number 50, related to traumatic memory. Juror number 50 explained all of this to the jury. Ms. Maxwell's accusers were all believable. Juror number 50 said, nothing they said felt to me like a lie. Sometimes he said, 
you can misremember trivial details of a traumatic event without even doubting the core of the memory. Guys, and he went on a public interview and said this, okay? Juror number 50 also explained, again, based on his personal experience, why it was immaterial to him and the jury that the alleged victims did not disclose Ms. Maxwell's alleged involvement until very recently, some 20 years after the alleged abuse. I didn't disclose my abuse until I was in high school. You also didn't disclose your abuse to the fucking court, buddy, when you needed to do it, God damn it. Bro, this is clout chase to a degree I've never seen in my fucking life. My man wanted the clout so bad that he fucking lied under oath about being a victim on a big case. All right? Juror number 50 also had an excuse uh, for why the alleged victims in this case kept going back to Mr. Epstein and Ms. Maxwell and accepting help from them even after they had been abused. The alleged victim's conduct, explained to Juror 50, uh, was irrelevant to their credibility. And Juror 50, uh, I'm just going to call him 50. In 50's view, Ms. Wax Maxwell's defense team was continually attacking the alleged victims and trying to get the jury to judge them for their decisions as opposed to arguing that their stories were not worthy of belief. There was another interview. Daily fucking Mail. <laughs> on January 5th, the next day, the Daily Mail published an article based on its interview with Juror uh, 50 in which he described Miss Maxwell as a predator. Juror 50 also shared that he helped other members of the jury understand things from a victim's point of view and explained how you can't remember all the details, traumatic memories. There are some things that run together. When Juror 50 told his fellow jurors of the abuse he suffered, the room went silent. Although he couldn't remember every detail, there were others that stuck with him. I know what happened when I was sexually abused. I remember the color of the carpet, the wall. Some of it replayed like a video. 50 said the verdict was for all the victims. Listen, man, you got to put these people in jail, but you cannot circumvent due process to do so, man. Because now you're going to give a criminal the chance for another trial. The interview with Routers. The same day the Daily Mail published its article, Routers also published a story based on an interview Juror 50 provided to journalist Lou Cohen. In the Routers interview, 50 collaborated, uh, elaborated about the purpose and effect of his disclosing to the jury that he was a victim of sexual assault. According to 50, coming to a unanimous verdict wasn't easy, to be honest. In fact, several jurors doubted the credibility of Jane and Carolyn. When I shared that I had been sexually abused, recounted uh, 50. The jurors who had doubts were able to sort of come around on, they were able to come around on the memory aspect of the sexual abuse. <laughs> Guys, he's trying to virtue signal and what he doesn't realize is that he has literally fucked up the entire due process situation. He has given Ghislaine the ability to assert that her Sixth Amendment right was violated because this guy has proven that he is, without a shadow of a doubt, incapable of being impartial. And not only is he impartial, he was able to convince other jurors that we're not sure to convict. <sighs> the pretrial video of the interview with the Daily Mail. On January 7th, the Daily Mail published a video of a portion of the interview with 50. This video is submitted to the court as Exhibit 3. The video shows the moment when the interviewer confronts 50 about whether he disclosed to the court and the parties that he was a victim of sexual assault. The interviewer asked whether 50's history of being sexually abused was something that he'd say yes to in a questionnaire, such that it was something people were aware of when he was selected as a juror. Hmm. 50 denied being asked such a question, saying, no, they don't ask your sexual abuse history. They didn't ask it in a questionnaire. Really? Okay. 
Is that really true, my friend? Because last I checked, we saw it already on question 48. Oh, okay. Here's the shit right here. I say, God damn it. All right. Why was this shit not coming up before? All right. Because why? Hold on. Well, we already showed I showed it to y'all already. Number 48. They asked him explicitly and he said no several times. So question 48 and question 50, right? The interviewer challenged 50 on his response saying, I thought in the questionnaire there was a question that asked if you were a victim or if you're a friend or, or a relative victim. Pretty sure it was number 48, the interviewer concludes. Interesting, 50 responds, his face turning red. <laughs> <laughs> The interviewer notices that 50's face is flushing, saying, you're not out in the sun right now. 50 stumbles to respond, no, no. I know my face is red because I can feel the, the blood, but I honestly, that's why I answered it that way. I don't remember it being there, but um, I did answer. I definitely remember a family, a relative, something, but being sexually abused, I was honest on all my questions. Man, 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 man. Bro. <laughs> And here we go. Now, they got him on the social media. On January 4th, after Miss Osborne Crawley first published her interview with Juror 50, Annie Farmer, quote, tweeted a tweet from Miss Osborne Crawley linking to the interview. Miss Farmer said, Reading this, I was overwhelmed with a sense of gratitude for this juror who has been, who was brave enough to disclose his own trauma to help others understand the experience for the other women who testified and for my sister and all other survivors who spoke out and kept pushing for justice. Worldwide exclusive. I secured the first ever interview with a member of the jury in the Ghislaine Maxwell trial. I'm so grateful uh, to Scotty for take, talking to me about why. And then it goes on. A short time later, Juror 50 liked Miss Farmer's tweet. Juror 50 then tweeted directly to Miss Farmer's response. Here he is. Thanks for... <laughs> <laughs> Let's enlarge this bad boy. Thanks for being brave enough to stand up and share your experience. Your story was critical in how we reached our verdict in that jury room. Thanks for sharing my story. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Guys, number one, like the fucking video. All right. Because this was not easy to find. Ain't nobody breaking this stuff down to this degree. Even in news articles. They're not breaking it down like this. You guys are getting edutainment right now. My man is on Twitter incriminating himself. You can't make this shit up, all right? Oh, there's more likes of people watching? All right, we're lit then. 50 also likes like Ms. Uh, Osborne Crawley's tweet linking to his interview. At the time, 50 tweeted to Ms. Farmer. His Twitter handle name was the same name used in his press interviews, Scotty David NYC. Here he is on Twitter. Manhattan, New York. Joined April 2021. Right? There's his Twitter account. Shortly after tweeting, Miss Farmer, however, Juror 50, changed his Twitter handle to NYCSSDDD. He also attempted to delete his tweet to Miss Farmer. Oh, oh, oh. He knows what's going on. He knows. <laughs> he knows that he fucked up, man. He knows. All right. Thanks for being brave enough to stand up and share your experience. Your story is critical in how we reached our verdict in that jury room. So he takes his picture down and changes his name. But Ghislaine's defense team is on it. And he deleted the tweet. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. It gets better. Juror 50 did not unlike Miss Farmer's tweet or tweet by Miss Osborne Crawley linking to his interview. In early January, 50 also posted his jury service on his Instagram account. Bro! 
You guys got that popcorn? Because I got that popcorn. All right. My man could not wait to get on the internet. Here's the Instagram. This bear, this bear travels. Is that what it is? Yeah, this bear travels. Scotty David traveling around the world as much as I can. <laughs> and he put up New York City, New York. I can now tell everyone that I was a juror on the Ghislaine Maxwell trial. Been an incredible, surreal experience. And and uh, I guess it didn't put the re the rest of it. But the state does not offer therapy, unfortunately. But I see a therapist regularly, so I have had some help dealing with the stress from this case. Oh, man. And there's pictures, right? Shortly thereafter, 50 predictably deleted his Twitter account and his Instagram account. He also appears to have deleted his Facebook and LinkedIn accounts. <laughs> A second juror admits to disclosing during de de uh, deliberations that they were a victim of sexual assault. During his press tour, Juror 50 revealed in interviews that he was not alone in revealing to jurors that he was a victim of sexual assault, describing to a reporter that a second juror also disclosed that they were a victim of sexual abuse. On January 5th, the New York Times published an article confirming Juror 50's statement reporting that a second juror described in an interview having been sexually abused as a child. This juror, who requested anonymity, said they too had discussed the experience during deliberations at the re and th that the revelation had appeared to help the sh shape the jury's discussions. To date, this juror has not publicly revealed their identity, and Ms. Maxwell does not know who it is. Bro. Holy shit. All right. This guy's is fucking comedy. All right. As you guys can see. All right. Um, I, I don't really have words for this. Um, if I was the case agent on this case, I would be fucking livid because let me tell y'all something that they're not going to tell you guys about, um, being a federal agent. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, because I've been, uh, in a trial before many agents have never been through trial before most 90, like 98% of cases, guys plead out in the federal uh, court system because they're facing such extensive time. But guess what? I went to trial. You guys want to know? What it's like to go to trial as the case agent? You guys want to know? It's a fucking nightmare. You want to know why? You become the AUSA's bitch. Okay? I'm going to say that again for y'all. When you go to trial and you're the case agent, you're the one that arrested the guy, you wrote the affidavits, you put this fucking case together. When it goes to trial, power shifts, baby. You are now the AUSA's bitch. Anyone that has been to trial, that is uh, whether you work for FBI, DEA, ATF, Homeland Security Investigations, OPR, OIG, I don't give a fuck. If you go to trial, you guys know what I'm talking about. Anybody here that's an 1811 knows what I'm talking about. If you go to trial, you are the AUSA's bitch. It is your job to gather the witnesses, to make coordination of witnesses, to get them prepared, to go find witnesses, to go fucking, um, you're going to be there during all the prep. You're going to um, you have all the documents ready. You have to prepare the agents that are going to testify because nine out of 10 times the case agent doesn't testify himself, right? Most of the time the case agent does have testify himself. But if you're the only agent that knows the case, then guess what? You might have to even testify, so you have to prepare yourself. You have to go get all the other agents that are involved in the case, get their asses involved, and get them to testify. Oh, when are you free? I got trial. I need you guys available. Oh, man, I got an Osterf case. Blah, 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 blah. You got to fucking get them involved. And then on top of that, another thing too. Yo, if, if any of the agents that worked on your case got in trouble, maybe they got a, a part of an internal investigation, maybe they got in trouble for some other bullshit, maybe they have some issue in the past, administrative issue, whatever, that all comes to light at trial, guys. All that stuff comes out, and it's your job as the case agent to get all this stuff ironed out with the AUSA so that when the AUSA goes to trial, 
It's a smooth road, baby. They can go and present the case. You basically have to give the AUSA the sword so that he can fight in court. Okay? So if a case goes to trial, guys, it is a nightmare for the case agent. So I can only imagine. You know why I'm eating this popcorn? Laughing at this fucking juror? Because I already know the nightmare that the case agent's probably going through. The AUSAs, the 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 entire um, the, the 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 whole FBI field office, every agent that was involved in testifying, putting that case together from I know FBI New York was involved. I know FBI um, uh, um, West Palm Beach was involved because we read the affid- the FBI reports. I know FBI New Mexico was in, uh, new, involved, like all these field offices were involved and had to travel to provide testimony. The detectives from the Palm Beach County had to come in and testify. The detectives from NYPD had to come in and testify because remember, a lot of these cases were state first. Okay. So this is, I can't even explain to you guys the amount of work that goes into a jury. Nobody on fucking YouTube could probably tell you guys because I've done it. I've been through a trial as, as the case agent. It is a nightmare. So I can only imagine the turmoil that's going through right now the FBI New York field office, the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York, et cetera, because more than likely, I'm going to tell y'all right now, I don't go, fuck, she's going to get a retrial, bro. She's going to get a mistrial because off this alone, you got two jurors that are on interviews admitting that they told the other deliberators, hey, this witness's um, testimony is bullshit because I'm a victim myself and I can actually remember things or whatever. Bro! (laughs) This is a clusterfuck if I've ever seen one. This is like a fucking, like, I don't know what this is. This is like a, like a, like a godsend for, uh, for Ghislaine and her defense team. They're just like, this does not happen, guys. This was a huge, huge fumble, man. Huge fucking fumble. And this juror, bro. <laughs> oh, man. Yo, this juror is in trouble. Because here's the thing. Even if 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 uh if she gets um go, gets to trial again and you know she gets found guilty or whatever, it's gonna take time, guys. It's gonna take time. And it's gonna take an enormous amount of resources, you know? So, man. And then here's the other thing. You got to get all those witnesses to come back and provide testimony again. And then they might give different testimony from the first trial. Man. I'm I'm getting bro, I'm like legit getting like 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 um like flashbacks when I went to trial of like what I had to um go through to put it together. And here's the thing, guys. My trial was a human smuggling case. It was nowhere near as complex as this. I had like maybe I had like um like six or seven witnesses, all law enforcement, no victims, no none of that. Okay? I could only imagine a case like this that has the press uh covers that it has, it has the amount of agents that had to testify, the amount of victims. V- the victim testimony is the worst because you got to bring them in, you got to get them ready. They're on there crying and shit. Like, oh man. Okay. So uh, let's see here. Um, let's see if I need to go through here. Um, so okay. So this is this is what happened here, right? So um, so now I'm going to pull up for you guys what ended up happening, what the final decision was from the judge. Okay, and the judge basically found this, and we're going to summarize it for you guys, so I don't put y'all to sleep. But I just saw uh, um, so. Here's um, the judge, Allison uh, J. Nathan, right? The district judge. Um, United States of America versus Ghislaine, as you guys can see. Here's the case uh, the case number again, et cetera, all the stuff. So let's just go here to the bottom, all right? Because um, she wants a new trial, okay? So uh, we're going to go... And we talked about a lot of this stuff already. She had to write this long ass fucking thing explaining. 
So here's the conclusion, all right? For the reasons stated above, so she's not going to get a new trial, but what she not, not yet, but what she is going to get, guys, is this because this 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 pretty much is like a formality that's needed before the new trial. For the reasons stated above, the court will hold a hearing regarding Juror 50's answers to questions 25 and 48 of the questionnaire. Okay, the public proceeding will take place on March 8th, 2020, at 10 a.m. Juror 50 is hereby ordered to appear in courtroom 906 of the Thurgood Marshall United States Courthouse, 40 Center Street, New York, New York, at that time and date to give testimony under oath in response to the court's questions. Counsel for the defendant and the government are ordered to submit via email proposed questions in accordance with this opinion and order on or so March 1st, 2022. So ordered. And this was filed on February 24th, 2022. So. Um, he's going to go and he's going to have to answer questions, guys, under oath. And what I think is going to happen, I'll give my predictions here as I'm looking through this. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything here for y'all. Um, Christina, can you pull up chats real quick? Uh, that we, that anything that might've come up, uh, yeah. So the defendant, so this is basically, um, you know, this is basically like the defendant has not. So the defendant guys is a Ghislaine. So what Ghislaine's defense guys. So let me tell you the strategy of what her defense basically did. Her defense was like, yo, this is a, a miscarriage of justice. Uh, we need a new trial, blah, blah, blah. And I don't want the, 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 the juror to be able to see the questions that he answered because they didn't want him to be able to be prepared for when he comes in for the, for the thing. So long story short, the judge was like, no, it doesn't matter. He's going to be able to see his questions, you know, and, you know, because it's going to waste time that, you know, because he's I'm going to give it to him in time or whatever. Like, no, he's going to be able to see the questions beforehand. We're going to do the the, the the hearing. And um, and the government is allowing the hearing to happen. The government understands that there was a huge fuck up here and they're going to let the hearing happen on a limited basis. But what I think is going to happen is this fucking guy. My prediction is this. He's going to go in there with counsel. OK. You guys know what that means when you go in there with counsel, huh? He knows he's in trouble, all right? He knows he's in trouble. So what's probably going to happen is they're going to bring him in. They're going to swear him in. They're going to ask him questions. He's going to say, I plead the fifth. And he's probably not going to, if he's not an idiot and his counsel's not an idiot, he's going to probably not answer any questions because Answering questions is going to incriminate himself. He's already fucked up a bunch of times by saying, oh, I didn't know that they asked these questions, right? Which you guys read before. And then another one, he said, oh, I just like sped through the questions. Like I didn't even like pay attention. What? So which one is it, bro? And on top of that, you knew you were doing a sex trafficking case. You knew that the questions that they were going to ask you about your experience to your past with being sexually abused or, you know, being a victim of a sex crime would be material to you being uh, allowed to be a juror or not. And on top of that, I ain't gonna lie. You know what the defense is gonna do for Ghislaine? They're gonna paint him as a clout chaser that lied intentionally to go ahead and get on a large scale case so that he can go on social media and get personal gain. That's what the defense is gonna do. And here's the thing that sucks, guys. They're probably, if if this works out like the way I think it is, she's gonna get a uh, she's gonna get a mistrial, and they're gonna have to redo everything again, and that's gonna be a nightmare for the U.S. government, okay, to put this case together again and argue it again, okay. And remember, as a defense, all you have to do is show a little bit of reasonable doubt, bro. So they're gonna have to do jury selection again, everything. And I ain't gonna lie, the fact that there were two defendants in here that lied that were actually victims of sexual abuse or, or victims of a sex crime there was no way they could be partial which absolutely goes against the sixth amendment right that you have in the united states to be judged by a peer by your 12 of your peers that are impartial and looking at the evidence versus their own personal um biases bro so this guy Wanted to clout chase and fucked up this case. And this woman 
might get a chance. Do I think she's going to be free? No, she's probably still going to get found guilty, whatever. But there's a good chance now that she, I would say, it's a 50 to 70% chance that she's going to get a, 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 another trial, guys. That's how high I think it is. A 50 to 70% chance that she's going to get another trial, which would be a nightmare for the U.S. government to prepare a case like this again. As complex as this case is. No, a mistrial does not mean she walks free, guys. It just means she gets another trial. She gets another trial. Can you break down the Glock 9 a Hot Boy Rico case? I can. It's a state Rico case, though, guys, which state cases are a pain in the ass to get. Um, but yeah, guys, that's the latest with this case right here. March 8th is, is going to be the hearing. And I willing to bet, bro, he's going to go in there with his defense attorney. He ain't going to say shit. And if there's a mistrial, <laughs> if there's a mistrial, all I got to say next day, FBI, open up. and they're going to go get his ass too, bro. <laughs> I would be fucking pissed if I was the, the, um, the special agent in charge for the FBI field office. And he comes in and he says, I plead the fifth. I'm not talking. I would, bro. I would be fucking talking to a U.S. attorney. We need to prosecute this guy because they need to make an example of him. They need to make an example of him. Like you cannot get on a on on a on a jury for a big case and then go to several media outlets, do interviews, get this clout, put on Twitter, put on Instagram, all this shit, get this fame, and 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 and, and fucking abuse the justice system. For your own personal gain. They're 100 percent gonna go after him. I would I would be shocked if they didn't. The the the, the special agent in charge is probably going lo losing his brain right now. The US attorney and the and the SAC are probably like, what the fuck? You have to go after this guy. You have to. He fucking lied. And and, and not only did he lie, he gave a a child abuser a chance, bro. That's the problem. So, hey, man, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? We're going to have this popcorn here, okay? Uh, this guy, juror number 50, he fucked up big time. <laughs> you can't make this shit up, bro. You really cannot make this shit up. My man lied on her oath for likes on Instagram. <laughs> all right okay so um let's see here any other chats um okay we got a uh, viking paradigm this is the issue sjw slash left today in a nutshell they do more harm to victims than help while feeling like they're helping smh yeah bro he thought he was helping he actually fucked like the same victims that he was talking about now he's gonna have to make them relive it again because they're gonna have to go through that testimony again bro he actually hurt the case more than anything. Him and the other one. So, yeah, man. This is, this is, I can't even explain to you guys how big of a fuck up this, this was uh, on the part of this guy. Okay. Uh, I'm going to pull up here. Let me make sure that I did not miss any of your chats, guys. Um, and guys, you know what? Matter of fact, um, Christina's monitoring the chat real quick. Can y'all put down what case you guys want me to break down next week? Um. Go ahead and start putting them in the chat. Christina's going to look at them and uh, highlight them. So th thank you, Michael. Me stroke five bucks. Um, she's going to start highlighting them. What, what, are some, what are some of the cases they're bringing up, Christina? No, no, but read them out. Read them out. No, no, I literally. Um, Tory Lanez. Okay. Tory Lanez. Um, what else? Tommy and Shay. <laughs> Who? <laughs> no. Tommy and Shay. Oh, Tommy and Shay. Oh, okay. All right. That's Fair so enough. Ha, 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 guys. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, All right. What else? Um, damn. NBA Young Boy. Okay. NBA Young Boy. I could do that one. Coach the Ghost. I want to do that one. That one is actually... Uh, I'm a big fan of Coach the Ghost, so I actually want to do that one. Is that a state or federal? That one's a federal one. Okay. Well, actually, no. It's two. It's two. It's a federal case. And it's a and it's a state case. The state case is a murder case, but he has a, a federal gun case too, man. So I just need the, the location. Was that? I just need the location of the state. Oh, um, yeah. oh no, it's it's uh it's in New York. Murder. They got him for murder in yeah. New York City. Yeah, Chapel. 
El Chapo. Okay, that one's guys. Chapo's gonna that one's gonna take some time. Interesting. Chapo Chapo's gonna definitely be uh extensive. What was that? Who? Kanye and Ski. Oh, ha ha ha! I don't think you got arrested for that. I don't think that's. I don't think you got arrested for that one. Um. Oh, they said this a lot. Um. Tax them. Who? Tax phone is it? Okay, yeah, write that they one down. No, right. I, already, I already have that you one. You have down. that one down? Okay. Cause um because yeah, because they definitely um they, they definitely mentioned that. I I got the Rallo case ready to go too, guys, by the way. Gucci All right. Man? So I got huh? What's that? Gucci man? Gucci what? Gucci man? Yeah. Oh okay. Gucci good probably his murder case. The when state versus Roderick Davis. When he went to jail. For? When he when he went to jail for oh. killing uh young Jesus guy. Oh, All right. Uh guys, Q and A, by the way. Um Questions, uh, get your questions in now. Super chat them in. Uh, I'm reading some of these super chats. Wizard X goes two dollars. NYC case against Trump. Um, you know what? I can do that one. Um, can you highlight that one as well? Yeah, he wants the NYC case against Trump. They're talking because we talked about this on Timcast that they were going to push to indict dump, uh, tr dump Trump for some kind of uh, mortgage fraud or some bullshit like that. One of his real estate properties. So, um, I'll look into that. Um, let's see here. Want the Boston Marathon bombing. That's a lot. Uh, I was there for that. That's awful. I know that case intimately. I can do the Boston Marathon bombing case. My, I was in Boston when that happened. My cousin's father was like the guy with the cowboy hat. What? Like one of the guys who lost his leg, my um cousin's father, was the one who ran into the cloud during a bombing and grabbed the guy and saved him and everything. And he's like known all over. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Christina's from Boston, guys. In case you guys are wondering, I was there that day. It was awful. You, oh, you were at you were at you were there. Yeah. You were at the finish line. Yeah, I was drinking. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you didn't help nobody. You didn't do nothing except for drink alcohol. Congratulations, fucking useless. Listen, <laughs> I didn't know it was gonna happen. <laughs> I can I can definitely do the Boston Marathon bombing, guys. I got a crazy story about that case, bro. The guy who I got a crazy story about that case about what I was doing because I was working for Homeland Security as an intern at that time. What's up? There was a um, they were going after everybody in Boston. Like when I say there was a guy that lived right next door to me, he I thought he was so nice. Mm -hmm. And actually, no, like a week later, the feds get him because he was like planning he had bombs in his house. And stuff. I'm gonna say, <laughs> I was like, wow. Oh yeah, okay, go the, the, that Boston Marathon bombing case. They oh, they did God. not play. Um, yeah, you know what, guys? I might do that one next week for y'all. Who knows? I I really I like that case. That case was a good one. I know a lot about um, that case. um, okay. Andrew Cardenas, uh, 20 bucks. Um, bro, this is so odd. Not only did the two jurors not tell the truth, but they broke the law. Honestly, who's to say that there um, won't be another impartial juror in the next trial? This is so weird. Also, they went to the media. Wow. Yeah, bro. Fucking stupid clout, man. Um, Eric Brown, could it be possible that maybe powerful people that knew Epstein and or was included in that group try to use coercion or a juror, uh, on juror number 51? Potentially, man. I mean, Epstein's dead, so I don't know. Any update on the our, uh, Amiri Bandit? Oh, yeah, K-Flock. Uh, Christina will do that one for you, so don't worry. Um, let's see here. I'm just making sure I didn't read. I, I didn't forget any of these chats. Don't forget to break down Coach the Ghost. Yes, I will do Coach the Ghost for y'all, man. If anything, I'm going to do Coach the Ghost for me because I'm, I'm a fucking fan. I got to research and figure out what the hell's going on. But just so y'all know, he's in a lot of trouble, bro. They got him for murder. New York State got him for murder. They went down to Georgia and got him. And he was on the run, guys, for probation for two years. I didn't even know that shit. My man was dropping hits. Hit list and fucking movie and all these songs, uh, gooey sauce. While he he signed a Gucci while he was on a run. That's why he couldn't do no shows. And then on top of that, um, I found a federal indictment for him, uh, for for guns, for gun rack, for for gun racketeering. All right. Um, let's see here. You should do your email. The email? What do you mean? You have an email oh yeah, tell them tell them about the email, Christina. Um, What's the just, email? Hold on, let me just get it up. Oh, uh, you don't know it. Well, I just want to make sure I had the right one. You had one job, bro. <laughs> you stupid. Okay. Uh, um, so we have an email um fedit partnerships at gmail.com. Um, I delete it's on my phone. So um if you guys have any cases that I didn't see, just email it there and I can just take a look at it. And what else, I mean, what else do you want with email? Um no, yeah, that that's it. Yeah, yeah. Just just uh, submit submit cases there. Yeah. Just and, and then if they have, do bro, if you guys have documents, it actually helps me cut down time a lot. Like this Epstein case, man, both of these uh, these two took a lot of time. Shout out to Aisha. Aisha made an yeah. excellent outline, helped me out with this. Um, but like, yeah, man, like going through their stuff, guys, this is a fairly complex case. Long, you know, we're talking about the span of fucking 20 plus years. So, yeah, man. Um, okay. Uh, 
What's up? Also with the email, like if you guys are gonna email me cases, um, we are looking for people in states. In what? In different states to go get some go get some of the courses. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, just, yeah. If people can help us. Matter yeah, of fact, yo, me. Y'all know, you, you guys already know that um matter of fact, man, fucking if anyone wants to go to this court uh thing right here, anyone lives in New York City and wants to go uh on March eighth at ten AM. Uh, courtroom 906 Thurgood Marshall United States Courthouse Center Street New York New York um guys federal courthouses are um are open to the public like you can you can go to that hearing uh I'd be interested to see if one of you guys could go for me that'd be fucking awesome yeah just contact the email and just let me contact know. the email contact me on Instagram or the email's the best contact the email because then uh me or Christina can check it and um if one of you guys go go there guys take notes and let me know what you guys find, and then I'll shout you out on the air, and we'll we'll talk about it on air, and I'll give an update. Hey, someone went, and you know this is what we do. I think this guy's gonna show up and fucking plead the fifth. I'd be amazed if he actually gave a statement, bro. <laughs> if he if he gives a statement, uh, man, stupid. That is, it ain't gonna be good for him. So, so yeah, um, but yeah, anyone that's up in New York City, man, got some time? March eighth, ten a.m. You know, go check it out, bro. Um. All right. Oh, R. Kelly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have R. Kelly written down? Yeah, we already have it. We have to do R. Time. Kelly. That's another one we have to do, too. I'm going to take a break oh. from these sex cases for a bit. I ain't going to lie. I don't like these things. Uh, <laughs> we have a whole list from, yeah. like, the last, from the very first show. Yeah, I'll probably do, I'll, I'll do either Rallo or the or the Boston Marathon bombing case, but keep sending them in. Um, and, uh, guys, we'll, I'll, um, I got y'all. Uh. Isaac Jason Wolf, five books. Shout out to Myron for breaking down cases. You made a new lane breaking down these cases on YouTube. Absolutely, guys. And not only am I the only one breaking down these cases, nobody can break it down to the level that I do. Like, I'm telling you guys the 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 the, the reality of trial as a federal agent. You are the AUSA's bitch, bro. <laughs> you really are, man. It's your job to make the AUSA's job easy when it comes to trial. You must give him the sword so that he can battle in court. Because if he loses, you gonna lose, and that's not gonna be a good look. No one wants to lose. You put in all that fucking work to make that case happen from the beginning. You got to see it all the way through to the to the conviction, my friends. Um. All right. Cool. Um. The email guy. What's the email again, Christina? I'm actually just gonna post it right now. It's fedditpartnerships at gmail dot com. Fedditpartnerships at gmail dot com. Uh. Let me. I'll type it in here in the chat right now. And then just put it. I guess in the bio. Yeah, I go put it in bio too. I'm going to put it in the partnerships at gmail.com. That's that's it right there, guys. Fed it partnerships at gmail.com. All right. Um, all right, guys. Uh, that's going to do it for this broadcast. I love you all, man. Thank you guys so much. Um, this is a good breakdown. Um, it sucks that we spent such amount, a large amount of time breaking down this dumbass juror, but I think you guys need to know that the U.S. government won the trial, and this fucking guy fucked it up. So, someone said Fresh's feet case. What was that? Fresh's what? Fresh's feet case. Fresh's feet case. There's no, there is no case for them. Goddamn feet. That that shit is terrible. All right, guys. Uh, we'll catch you guys tomorrow. We got episode dropping with Aaron Clary on money. Um, it's gonna be awesome. Check it out. And then we're gonna have a late night show with some lovely ladies. Thank you guys so much for the donations. I hope you guys enjoyed this show. Uh. Timestamps will be up very soon. And yeah, thank you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Peace. Uh, NCIS. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Let's, let's break this down too. Uh, okay. So NCIS, Army CID, or AKA our sleeper guys. These, these companies, right? So what happens is your boys over there at the bureau.